All right, well, we're here on our first ever Beefs TV here on Air KJS Communications and Junior Mustangs TV. And I've got my good friend Jen Annan and her husband, good, got to coach him when he was a few years back, Rob Annan. This is one part of the general manager team of the Beef Eaters. Uh, 2021, Jen, it's been two years. The last time you were on the field, you were playing for an opportunity to go to the national championship. How does it feel like coming back and, and talk about, you know, missing football for two years? Um, it is exciting to be back and uh, it's been far too long and we're just yeah we're excited to be back on the field and looking forward to uh to facing hamilton next weekend so we were talking earlier do you have a scouting report you said you don't obviously two years away some of the things that have happened in those two years and even in that last year you were playing and you've been working on an initiative you brought the junior mustangs in and a lot of the local football community uh talk a bit about your heart on this it's a it's a tough one we've lost a few uh quality men young men um, you know, unfortunately, um, they've passed away and, and you've kind of championed this uh, initiative to make sure that we are not just out here to play football, but we're taking care of uh, our, our, our young men and our young ladies. Yeah, so unfortunately, at the end of uh, the season in 2019, we lost, uh, tragically lost one of our players to um, suicide. And uh, that was devastating to our team. Um, he was an important part of our team and our family. And uh, we just, uh, that just uh, accentuated the fact that we needed to uh, bring on and look seriously at bringing on a coach that would be specifically um, a life coach. So that coach that isn't coaching on the field, but more um, helping with players and off the field. Uh, whether it be um, personal issues, um, maybe it might be work issues, or um, needing help with school. We have a lot of players that are from out of town, that are away from family. We have uh, players that are all in different uh, areas, times of their life. Um, and so we just felt that it was important to have a dedicated coach that could assist players off the field. And who has that role with the beef eaters? So unfortunately, um, with just with COVID and getting back on the field this year and all that that has encompassed and all the work with that because there are extra uh, precautions and things that we need to do uh, we have been uh, we haven't been able to secure a life coach at this point we are in conversations with someone who is quite interested in the role um, so we're hoping that we'll be able to uh, bring him in on, onto our coaching staff to be able to fill that role. And what would you say to the, all the younger teams? I mean, you've got the LMFA getting ready to start on September 11th. High school, we're hoping, is going to be coming back. Um, you know, you've got our program with the Junior Mustangs. Do you think it's important at all levels to have a life coach? I guess it's tough at, at the house league level, but is that a, a, a place where we miss? Because most coaches do care, but they're so focused on the game and the other things that lead up to the game. Uh, what, do you think this would be a great thing for, for all teams to start adapting here in the London area? Absolutely. And understanding that we can't be all things to all the kids, but I think just knowing that there is somebody there, and you're right, all of our coaches are invested in each of their players, um, you know, but they are, as you said, they're busy working and, and preparing, uh, you know, for what they're doing on the field. So it's, it's a lot to ask them to do that in addition. So I do think it's important at all levels to have that person in place that can uh, just, again, just offer that extra support. Even if it's just taking a player out for a coffee um, or in our case, maybe a beer, mm -hmm. um, you know, and just uh, connecting with them um, and just, yeah, sometimes it's just, they just need someone to talk to and run things past. I, you, this is basically like a team chaplain in the old days. You'd have that, yeah. you know, you have that team, team chaplain type of response. I love the, the terminology life coach. We wish you all the best with it. And we hope that all of London will uh, join you in these efforts to, and again, with COVID and everything, and you've got these coaches, I mean, they're life coaches as well, but they we are. need someone dedicated to that area. And I think it's a great initiative that you guys have started. Yeah. Don't forget, you can uh, always pick up your beef eater beer, second and goal. And where where can they get that, uh, Jen? That is uh, you, that's uh, you can purchase that at the London Brewing Co-op on Burbrook.
Otho Dundas. Make sure you're 21 or 19 years of old. Yeah. 19 if you're a Canadian, 21 if you're American. Just kidding. Listen, well, not just kidding, but that, that is serious. Uh, again, Jen, thank you for your time. Uh, we look forward. You know, you brought us back. Uh, you had us do a few games. We did the national championship. Yep. Um, and uh, we're back, so we're thankful to be back. Uh, what are you looking for this year from uh, Junior Mustangs TV, RK Jazz Communication, and the launching of our first ever Beefs TV, which will start next Saturday, well, this Saturday coming. Yep. Um, and if you're watching this, we did this a week ago. Uh, we're looking forward to the 28th, the first football game in London in close to two years, I think, Adam. So it's been a long time. We're thrilled to have uh, Mustangs TV on board with us and Air KJX. Like, we're just so thankful for you guys and um, and the opportunity that you've given us to be able to uh, to stream our games and to have even more fans because, uh, again, with COVID restrictions, we are limited to the number of, of uh, spectators that we can have here on the field. So to have that opportunity for even more fans to be able to watch from the comfort of their living rooms, um, that's pretty exciting. And we're back, and I've got the second part of the ownership team uh, of the Beef Eaters. A good friend of mine, uh, Rob Annan, had a chance to coach him a long time ago, believe it or not. One of the toughest uh, men I know, pound for pound. Rob, uh, COVID, two years, you've been away from football. Uh, you know, you're back with the old. All kinds of changes have happened. But the best change is we get to come watch your, your pregame here today as you guys are preparing. How does that feel? Oh, it feels awesome, especially get these kids out because I think the one issue they suffer is from COVID is not doing anything. These kids need to be active, and we give them the opportunity. And, you know, with being with the CJFL and you've been a part of uh, the OFC for a long time now, uh, you, you hired a new coach in the offseason. Talk a bit about that. Well, we knew Jesse wasn't going to be here long term, uh, but we were searching out. We found Gavin. Gavin's had interest in the past, and it finally worked where he's got a job here in town, and it, basically all the uh, things came together at the right time because uh, he, he, he wants to be here for a while. So that's what we're trying to do, develop a good long-term coaching staff. And Gavin, being a defensive uh, specialist that won a great cup with the uh, Toronto Argonauts a few years ago, also worked with the Junior Mustangs. He's worked all across the country, from east to west coast. He's been a part of the Junior Football, what are you looking for from this team? It seems different. I mean, Jesse did a great job recruiting, bringing in tons of talent. You guys won uh, the second OFC championship in uh, club history last uh, time we were out, and which was 219. And uh, here you are with Gavin. Um, you know, what, what are some of the things that you're hoping he's going to bring to the table? Basically, we've been growing uh, since Jen and I took over the team. I mean, it's bringing a new um, outlook for the team how we, we approach things that we're making a big family. Jesse helped a lot in a sense that he, he he ran his own team, so he knew what to do, but it was hard for him to let us do it, whereas Gavin is looking for us for a lot of help that way. Um, we expect him to develop a good, strong core of kids and coaches on the t on the field. Yeah, you know, coming up short in the in the in the junior championship game, you played a team like Saskatoon Hilltops. You know, they were quality. Uh, what do you think you guys learned from that? And now you're going into two years without playing. You got unknowns. Hamilton's always, just, you know, uh, historically has been very very strong. Uh, you know, you're going into this season. You've got expectations, but there are some there are some unknowns and. And uh, I think that's kind of the beauty of this. But this team here in particular does look different. You were pretty good in 2019, and this looks like you got a little bit more speed, I think, is what I've seen so far. Is there anything else that you can uh, you know, let us know as we go into this first game? Well, one of the things I, I find that Gavin has done differently, which I appreciate, he's looking at 40 solid players. If we drop to 40 today, who can we run with? Because that's what the CGFL playoffs are, 40 players. Uh, one thing we've concentrated this year, we've actually got probably four quarterbacks on the roster, which when we went into the CJFL semifinals, we had one. And he, it was unfortunate for him because he, he knew he had no backups, so he had to stick it out. Now we have backups. So developing the younger players to, uh, uh, to be able to fill the spot if needed, if not for future. Oh, that's great. You know, Rob, uh, you've been around the community for a long time, and we thank you for all the hard work that you've put in. Talk about the CJFL and some of the things that, uh, you know, what's going to happen this year. I mean, obviously, the league's been pushed back to start in September. Uh, and then, of course, we're also looking at, um, you know, a, a national championship into December. Uh, is there any hopes of hosting again, or how is that going to work? Right now, the Ontario Conference hosts. Uh, if there's, we're, there's been no word as far as we're not having it, It'll be a little different in the past. We're not going to have an awards dinner and stuff like that, but we still will host a game. 
so whoever wins will host. Uh, if they do decide uh, after September 1st that it's a no-go, or if for some reason they can't, they decide later it's a no-go, Ontario will still host the next Canadian Bowl. Well, there you have it. The Canadian Bowl is coming here this year. That's such exciting news for, uh, you know, Junior Mustangs TV, RK Jazz Communications, and, of course, our first ever Beefs TV broadcast starting next Saturday. Rob, we're looking forward to it. Thank you for having us, and good luck this season. Thank you. All right, I'm with uh, Clark uh, McCallum, starting quarterback for our London Beef Eaters uh, this Saturday, the 28th. Looking forward, uh, Clark, to see you get back out there. And I've got the OC quarterback coach, uh, Chad Stewart. Uh, Chad, uh, go, you might know him for going for two, but this isn't going for two. This is uh, Air KJX Communications and our first ever Beefs TV. Welcome, Chad. Hey, KJ, thanks for having me, man. All right, well, listen, we'll start with you, Clark. Um, you know, going into that championship game two years ago, 2019, you haven't played football for two years. Unfortunately, you weren't able to to play. I mean, you, you played with your heart in your sleeve that whole playoff run. Uh, you and Jake Powell shared time. You won a national championship. You're going into a new season. You've had two years. What are you looking – what kind of team do you have here? Uh, what do you see happening uh, this Saturday? Uh, team's a bit different this year. we got a lot of younger guys. That's just what's going to happen with the two-year turnover, though, but – it's exciting to be back on the field, right? Like it's been two years off or whatever, COVID as well for a year. And it's just awesome being back on the field, playing football, running routes. Uh, we got a good fast team, maybe a little undersized, but it doesn't matter. We'll get out there and just ball with anybody. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I noticed the speed. You had some guys go up today, make some spectacular catches for you. Uh, this is your last year, correct, Clark? So you've, you're the veteran. Uh, you've been here. Uh, I'm going to go over to your OC here because I know he's very fond of you. Chad, what does it mean to have a guy like like Clark? You've got three young quarterbacks behind him. you got two more coming in this week. So, I mean, never have the Beefers had this many quarterbacks. It's an awesome feeling, I'm sure, for you. But what is it like to have a guy like Clark at the helm? Yeah, first off, having five quarterbacks at the junior level is unreal. And one of the nice things that pushes Clark every day to be better, and one nice thing is he's a coach on the field. Like, I don't think people give him the credit that he deserves. This is fourth offense in four years, and he's taken it like a champ. He's never been upset about it. He asks questions. He leads the guys. Um, so when you have that coach out there and the guys know who to turn to, it just makes them feel that much more confident. They're more confident in their decisions when they're out there because they know he's going to get the job done and get the ball to them. And you're playing a Hamilton team, usually a, a really good defense. Clark, being that veteran, being in his last year, having played many years and learned you know, what it's like to lose and what it's like to win, um, yeah, you've got depth, but what are you asking Clark to do to keep himself? Because you want him for the whole season, I'm sure. Yeah, that's uh, one of the tough things. Uh, <laughs> Clark's a lunch pail kind of guy, and like I'll never forget the play he made two years when he lost his helmet, finished up the run, got a touchdown. I've never seen a team erupt like that. As much as I want to see him be that guy because that's who he is, it's like let's, let's just wait a little bit. Week, week one's not the week to do that, but – that being said, I know who Clark is, and that helmet's going to get put down, and he's going to he's going to drop a shoulder into somebody and lead by example. Clark, uh, talk about Gavin Lake, new head coach. Jesse uh, Maddox led you to a, a national championship, a great recruiting job that he did. Then COVID hits, yeah. and you bring in a guy with tons of experience in the junior level, tons of, of experience in Canada, has a great cup ring with the Argos. Uh, what's it been to to be working with a, with a guy like Gavin, going from Jesse to Gavin? Uh, different for sure. There's different types of coaches, however just so knowledgeable right like you like you said he's been all over the place he was coaching uh film for a great cup or for the junior or toronto argos and the great cup so just the, the knowledge he brings is far and beyond anything i've had other than maybe one year of football before so it's definitely awesome to be able to learn under him and just absorb everything i can just getting ready for the year right uh, that's great. And, you know, Chad, I'm going to go to you on this. Uh, you've had to work with different head coaches over the last few years. Uh, Chris Marshall, uh, you've went, uh, I, I believe, then it was Jesse, and now it's uh, it's uh, uh, Gavin. Uh, why don't you close us out here, talk to us about the experience. You know, you've been through your third offense now, and what does it feel like uh, being a big part of this whole? It's been a massive learning curve. Um, obviously, I think this offense has been much more advanced of what we have done and what we're asking of the guys. That being said, uh, the man's an encyclopedia. Um, like the knowledge that he brings to us is like second to nine. I'm learning probably more in the last nine months of football than I learned in ten before that. Um, and like he really like he loves the game too. So like when you talk to him and you see how passionate he is, like you want to learn because you don't want to let someone like that down either. You want to get to his level. 
I'll, I'll say this for these guys. Clark McCallum, starting quarterback for the Beef Eaters. We wish you all the best. And don't forget, if you ever get a chance, watch Going for Two for this guy, Chad Stewart, and all his buddies. And sometimes I get the little cameo on there. Uh, but, Chad, we wish you all, the both of you guys, all the, the great success this season. We look forward to being on our first ever Beefs TV broadcast next Saturday. Thank you. All right, thank you, guys. Hey, hey uh, welcome back to uh, Beefs TV, our first ever uh, broadcast. And I've got Jordan here uh, from Connecticut. Uh, Jordan, talk to us about uh, you're down here, you're, you're in Canada, you're playing defensive line, DN specifically, but you can play any of the positions. Uh, what do you what do you think about uh, the experience you're play, playing Canadian football? Uh, I think the experience is good. Um, it's a little bit different uh, compared to American football, but I'm getting the hang of everything. It's going pretty well. Yeah, we were watching you today, and I was talking to Zach. I go, they can't block this guy. Um, I mean, I guess you've been going against your, your guys uh, the whole time. It's a yard off the ball. Talk about that and, and talk about, you know, I'm sure you're waiting for some new blood. And an opponent, Hamilton, which are usually pretty good, uh, talk about the, the feelings you're going to have this week as we you're basically, you know, uh, a week away from your first game here in Canada. Uh, it's feeling good. I think it feels good for all of us. Uh, we, you know, we've been off the field for about a year or two, you know. Everything's getting built up. We're ready. You know, we've been working all summer, all year, so we're good to go. Well, just so your family knows, we're going to be live on YouTube. Uh, Air Cage Axe Communications is bringing the first ever Beef TV uh, broadcast, and so look forward to your family uh, checking you out, and they can, in the chat, send us little notes, and, and uh, we wish you all the best. Last thing I want to talk about, you're in a Canadian defense, 12 men on the field. What do you like about your defense? I was watching you guys, so you guys seem to be flying out there, flying to the football. Really like the intensity on the defense that I saw today. Um, I like all the blitzes, you know, we're, we're moving around, we're out there, uh, we're ready to lay somebody out, we're ready to go. So you're going to be a, a guy in the backfield, uh, pretty much we're calling your name a lot on Saturday. All 12 of us are going to be there. Give us that name one more time. Jordan Fletcher. All Jordan Fletcher, we'll be calling that name next week. Jordan, good luck. Thank you. All right, uh, it's KJ Kennedy back at Junior Mustangs TV. I've got the defense coordinator, Kevin Griffiths, and linebacker coach Austin Scarpelli with me. Uh, two guys that I've always uh, really looked up to. Got to work with Kevin uh, with uh, CCH. And uh, Kev, uh, you won a national championship. Oh, sorry, you won the OFC championship, my yeah, bad. Yeah. Uh, and it came up short in the uh, semifinals. And uh, Austin, uh, you're um, a guy that's coached everywhere in London. You've won uh, two OPFL championships back to back uh, with the uh, JP uh, with the Junior Mustangs and our, our organization. You've been with the Beefs for a long, long time. Uh, winning last the last championship had to be special for you uh, here. You're also a great high school coach. I'll start with you, Kev. Um, you know, as I welcome both these guys in, Kev, you know, you've had awesome with you now. Uh, what, is it, what is it like to have a guy that you can relate to, that you can communicate with? Uh, we've had two years off of football. I was watching your defense say you guys were flying out there. Mm -hmm. it, it's just awesome. It's, it's so nice to have a guy where I feel like we're always in tune. Every idea he I have, he are, he's already on the same page. Every idea he has, we just bounce these ideas back and forth, and it's just nice to have a, a support staff and other coaches on the defense that, you know, we're all on the same page, we're all working towards the same goal, and we're looking good out there. And, Austin, you know, you, same thing with Kev. I mean, you've been working with him. You know him. But talk about some of your linebackers. I mean, you guys were flying today. I mean, I was watching your timing even on the blitzes. I mean, I know defense is always ahead historically of the offenses, guys. But I was impressed today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have maybe five, five or six deep that can all play. I mean, Tyler Thompson, uh, Mo Kadri. He wasn't here tonight. But uh, Cody McRoberts can play. Nick Samus, young guy out of Banting, Matt Smith. Eric Baszler's, like, we, we're, we're pretty deep and some experienced players, they can fly, they like to fill, they, they're really learning how to read an offense. It, they're a pleasure to coach. Now, I say I coach Connor Elliott, he's working with our linebackers. I get to work with the defensive backs more, so I get to see them kind of from the peripheral. Our, our linebackers are, are rolling. Oh, sorry, I, 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 that's my fault. I saw you with the linebackers today. Conrad was there. Hi, Conrad, you just had a baby. Uh, uh, is it baby girl or boy, guys? Baby girl, that's right. Uh, Kev, talk about uh, this division. It is historically a very tough division. You got the Hurricanes coming in here. Um, don't know what's coming because it's been two years. Uh -huh. You're hearing. How do you prepare for such a team, and, and how important is defense in the first weeks of a season like this being off for two years? Oh, it, it, it's a big thing. We just got to break it down, get back to the fundamentals. We need to know where we need to be in pre-snap alignment, in the hot phase, and we need guys to go out there and make plays. You know, our defense has has been a staple on this team for a long time, and we expect to have the same thing this year. 
And Austin, I'll go to you. You've worked with Gavin Lake, uh, new head coach of the Beef Eaters. Um, you know, I know Gav, great guy. Uh, he's got tons of experience. What's it like having him, you know, because now you guys are back together. I mean, you worked with JP together, uh, but now you're back together and you're, you're, um, you're building something special here, I think, guys. Because when I look at the defense and then I look at the depth of your defense, like you were talking about, Austin, uh, just talk about the experience with Gavin and what you think he brings to the table. Well, I mean, number one, his experience from so many levels, you know, beyond, uh, you know, high school, university, uh, the CFL. Uh, I mean, he's seen it all, CJFL out west. Um, I mean, the level of organization, preparation, I mean, all the small details, uh, even things that I like to think, okay, I'm pretty covered. And coach, like, hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? So, I mean, the level of detail uh, is really taking the next step. And uh, you're starting to see it translate, you know, in practice every night. So it's, it's great. All right, and Austin, one last question for you before I finish with Kev. Um, uh, the Beef Eaters, um, you know, Jen Annan was talking about we, we lost some players in 2019, unfortunately. Talk about the camaraderie of this team. Um, it seems like there's a, I mean, obviously Jesse did a great thing of recruiting and stuff, and you guys won in, uh, the, the second OFC championship ever, guys. But talk about this group. There seems to be something in the air. I, I just can't wait to call the game next week. Yeah, I mean, I think some guys who have who've tasted winning a little bit, um, you know, some of the some of those teams in the past have, have gone through some hard uh, seasons and now that they, they sort of see what it takes and, and some of the process that goes into it, it's starting to become contagious. And you see those guys who are young are now leaders and veterans in the, in the program who are, are really starting to share with the other guys, hey, this is what it takes and this is what we got to do. And these are the positions we got to be in. This is how we prepare and how we practice. So it's all coming together and, and those guys are setting the tone. It's fantastic. Thank you, Austin. And Kev, I'll close with you. Last time you're on the field, Saskatoon Hilltops, you, you know, juggernaut, yada, yada, great offense. You're a defensive guy. I'm a defense. I hate giving up points. I know that day had to stick with you, and yet that was the last time you got on the field. I'm not trying to – I'm bringing this up because I know your competitiveness. Yeah. What do you think that lesson and, and having Gavin with you in this journey this year, uh, can this defense lead you guys to the mountaintop and let that offense grow through the season? Uh, is that what you're anticipating? Well, yeah, that, that game really humbled us. Uh, we, we did well all year long, and when it came to that last game, you know, it, it was just those little mistakes, those little differences. But I expect our defense to come out every single game, every single play. Like I said earlier, bring it down to the fundamentals, be out there. Everyone has each other's back. Everyone trusts each other on that defense, and I'm excited for things to come. All right, well, I'm KJ Kennedy for, uh, for Mr. Griffiths and Mr. Scarpelli. I'm telling you, if you love defensive football, stay tuned because at 5 p.m. we'll have this kickoff here, and you're going to see a defense fly to the football. All right, well, I got uh, Mo Codry here, and I've got Tyler Thompson with me on uh, Beef TV. And, guys, uh, watching the defense today in your walkthrough for next week's game, you guys look really well prepared. Talk about the experience uh, about being veterans and, and about playing the positions that you guys play. I mean, obviously, you're the focal point of this defense, the D-line and the linebackers working together. Oh, yeah, we've had a great set, uh, front seven ever since I started with this team, and that boils down to having a great coach and stuff. You know, Coach Kahn, Coach Scarps, and Coach Griff, they do a really great job of preparing us uh, and making sure that there's always three or four heads flying to the ball, and so that's something we, we pride ourselves on and something we're going to bring to each game this season for sure. Tyler, you were with the team uh, when they won the championship, but a, an injury kind of kept you out. What does it feel like to, you know, COVID, two years? I mean, when am I going to play football again? You're now in your senior year, correct, of, uh, of the Beef Eaters. And uh, this guy is close to me, man. I've, I know him and his family for a long time. So is actually Mr. Codra. I know his older uh, brothers. But, uh, uh, Tyler, talk about getting back on the field after, you know, basically three and a half years of waiting. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. Um, getting back out here, it's like I never left kind of thing. It just came right back to me. It was uh, kind of humbling my, my first practice out, uh, being a little rusty. But, uh, yeah, it just flowed right back, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good. And, and, Tyler, you've got Coach Gavin Lake. You know he's close to your family. Coach at South a little bit. Uh, he's coached all across Canada. Uh, talk about the experience of having Gavin here as, your, as he uh, leads you in this, uh, in this uh, 2021 season. Oh, he's, a, he's an amazing coach, uh, and I know that what he brings is, is amazing for us. Um, it's it's nice having a, a friendly face to a, a team that you know I, I haven't been too familiar with at all. Having him from from South back in our uh, officer run year was uh, 
Don't say that. <laughs> hey, don't say Rob. That was, was against uh, me, folks. Anyways. <laughs> it's awesome having him back. Yeah. And uh, I love playing for him, so it's going to be a fun year. Football is big to your family. Your dad's going to be out here. Talk about awesome. what that means to you, for your dad to see you back on the field again. I know it's going to be a special day uh, for your family. Yeah, so like you said, it's been like three, three plus years since I've played. Uh, before, I, I've had tons of football experience, you know that. Uh, I don't think he's ever missed a game up until that point. So three and a half years off kind of thing, he's going to be more excited almost than me to be out here. Well, that's awesome. Thank you, Tyler. And Mo, I'm going to finish with you. Listen, the Kadri family, I mean, you got an NHLer. Your brother, your uncles were solid football players that could have got D1 scholarships. I remember back in the day, Jay was uh, looking at Michigan State. Uh, a tremendous football pedigree in your family. You're Lebanese, I'm half Lebanese. So talk about that experience of, you know, because it's, it's tough. Not a lot of Lebanese kids get to play football until they're older. But talk about the experience of playing football and, and, and bringing that Lebanese spirit out here for Beefs TV. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was uh, I was exposed to football relatively late in my life. Uh, you know, in the middle of high school, I kind of started to start to play, and it was a slow learning curve for me. But you know, having a you know an athlete backed family with you know a ton of athletes, they definitely pushed me to to come out here and and give it up my all and and be my best because I know that they've they've done it before at a high level, uh, and so I'm just looking to continue that. But uh, but yeah, it's been a slow learning curve for me, and it's uh, it's been a long journey to this point, but it's uh, it's been a great one for sure. And make sure the Kadri family tunes in on YouTube, Definitely. on Eric K. Jacks Communications and Watches. Definitely. For Mr. Kadri and Mr. Thompson, I'm KJ Kennedy. We'll see you live Saturday night. Well, I'm here with Gavin Lake. Uh, first year, 2021, uh, London Beef Eater head coach. Gavin, um, you've come all across the country. You have been out east. You've been out west. You've won championships. You've lost big games. You've won big games. You've coached here in London. You have a huge pedigree. You've won a, an officer championship. You've won uh, some some uh, championships with the JP. Um, you've won as a, as, a, as a junior Stangs, a leader, uh, as, our, as our coaching uh, director. You've won at every level. You've experienced highs and lows. And now you're finally, I think, in the place that you want to be with the Beef Eaters 2021. I think this is going to be for a long haul. How does it feel in your first season? Jay, I love you, man. I miss you with the Junior Mustangs. Uh, I uh, came back to Ontario in 2013 and uh, reached out to JP Cercelli right away because we go way back 20 years. My first taste with the Beefs was actually Mike Cercelli resurrecting the Beefs. Right. And I was going to be the DC in 2001. Okay. So my familiarity with this logo goes way back. Now, obviously, life took me a few different places, but uh, one thing I, I always had in my heart was I was going to be coming back here at some point. So I remember JP when he was going to Mac as a, you know, puffy old lineman, and, and little Joe was running around. So the beefs never were far from my heart. And then uh, I moved back here in 13. I looked then. Of course, uh, it was a different setup. Uh, uh, Coach uh, Vu was here uh, coming off a successful 2012, so that was the, the approach. And then uh, the next time was uh, uh, Coach Marshall took it next step. And then, of course, Coach Maddox took a step after that. So I came in. I said, guys, this is going to be my third and final shot. Um, I want to coach in my own backyard. And uh, this was the opportunity to do it. And I'm happy I'm here. How hard is it to win a CJFL championship? Now, mm. and I know it's in your first year, it's going to be very hard. But talk about the years that you spent out west and what that kind of honed you to bring you into here now here in London and try to take this team to the next step, like you said, the final step. Well, I think one thing we have to understand is uh, we have 11 OUA schools taking talent. You know, we've got summer programs, we've got uh, five junior clubs. Manitoba has one university, one junior club. Saskatchewan has two universities, two junior clubs. So the Western clubs have to get all their players from their own provinces and they got to filter that way. Ontario hasn't won a championship Canadian-wise, 22 years, I believe Windsor in 99 was the last time. Now, we had a really special run with our coaching staff, the BI Raiders, uh, Coach Snoop Blocker. You know, we won like seven in a row uh, conference championships, three national titles with him. He uh, really set the tone. I learned a lot from him with working with the young guys. Um, you know, we had Andrew Harris, you know, arguably the greatest, you know, Canadian uh, running back for sure uh, that's ever. So ultimately, you know, when we went into Gordy Howe uh, Stadium in Saskatoon, you know, it was the Andrew Harris show and, and we were along for the ride. So, you know what, I've seen some things. They also practice, uh, they've got more of a youth sports philosophy. They're going uh, every night. Uh, we don't have that in Ontario. Uh, the OFC is unfortunately, a, you know, a third tier, you know, visual optic. So it's only the Tuesday, Thursday nights. So we have to maximize our time with these guys the best we can, whether it's with film, whether it's the weight room, what do we got to do? Because we already know we're behind the eight ball in recruiting. We're, we're behind the eight ball in practices, and we're behind the eight ball in sponsorships. 
okay, we don't have that big money that some of the clubs at West have. So, right. you know what, in 46 years, you know, we, we've done some good things and we're building. And I got to say, the Annans have really done a fantastic job last five, six years. You know, the product just keeps going up. And I was excited to be part of it and getting the chance. And here you are and, and you've, uh, you know, we've done a great job. I mean, you, I, I remember when you were the first talk about, you know, taking this job. I think you called every coach, uh, maybe in Ontario. I'm not sure, man, <laughs> probably outside of Ontario. You've got a coaching staff, though, that's familiar uh, with you and with the group here. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that feel like? You know what? It's, it's uh, an OFC championship pedigree staff. So first and foremost, I knew I could trust a certain level coming in. And, you know, 80% of them I had already crossed circles with, you know, with the junior Mustangs, with local high school, and, and of course with Western. So there was a familiarity there. There was already two degrees of separation. So it was a really natural progression, just walking in the door and open arms, extending trust, giving trust, both sides. Yeah, wonderful. Gav, uh, again, known you for uh, the last five years. Uh, really, it's been a blessing for me, not just on the football level, but as friendship. We have our own kind of banter that we go on with. But, um, you know, it, football is about relationships. You got a team coming in from Hamilton. Yeah. And uh, you know the Hurricanes are always prepared. What are some of the things that you're thinking uh, is going to take place in this first game? Or what needs to happen for the Beefs to get that first win going into this game against a solid Hurricanes club? I think that's a valid uh, question. I think the reality is with a year of lockdowns plus, not having fields, not having gyms, uh, ultimately the team that is the fittest and can execute the best in the shortest amount of time um, is going to do really well. Um, you know, some of the BC clubs have been able to go year round. They haven't had the COVID restrictions. You know, being in different stages of colors, not having a gym to work out, you know, dead feet on contact, conditioning, hamstrings, technique work. We couldn't have the winter conditioning camps. Uh, we're going to find out that the fittest guys and the guys who can execute fast, they're going to have an edge on game day. Going into this game, give us a few players that uh, on offense and defense and special teams that we should look out for. Ultimately, we need uh, quarterback Clark McCallum to have his day. Uh, any team needs to have their quarterback on game day, and we trust him with our read progression. We trust him as a general on the offense to get things done. We've got a stable of backs that we feel really good with. Um, we've got four or five that, you know, they can carry the rock. They've all got storied histories here locally through high school and with the junior Mustangs that, uh, that we're confident that they can get it done. Receiver-wise, we're still growing. We're still young, but we've got some exciting playmakers there. I, I'm, I'm really impressed to see their growth in the last four or five weeks. Uh, defensively, our force unit, again, as uh, Thompson has said, it, it's always been a strength. Mo has said he came in and, and the force unit was a strength. And we're going to expect to lean on that early, especially. We're going to need them to take control of this game. Defensive back, we have some really exciting guys, really strong athletes, just super young. So we got to get them some legs under them and experience. And you know what? Hey, it, anything can happen. We got a wind coming across the field. We got a sun in our face. We got only after our night practices, our second day game opportunity. So, you know, you've got a staff all new together for the first time, more or less. Okay, you've got a travel game from from uh, Hamilton with bus restrictions. So it could look like the cannonball run going up the 403 to get here. Like, guys, it, it's, it's going to be a lot of good, bad, and ugly. And we recognize that, and we got to roll with it and coach it up. Well, I, one of the, my favorite interviews today was Jordan Fletcher. I think he might be a secret weapon because I was watching him on your D-Lane. I, I don't think anyone can block this game. Game, uh, talking about what's going on. Welcome to the Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener here live on Beefs TV. It is the London Beef Eaters hosting the Hamilton Hurricanes live here from Citywide Sports Park. It's hard to believe it's been 679 days since the last time these two teams hooked it up. That was when the Beef Eaters beat these Hurricanes 17 to 8 to prevail in the OFC semifinal. They would go on to win the 2019 OFC championship. But man, oh man, it feels good to be back. The kickoff is here and the 2021 season is on its way. Hamilton back up the course. The Hurricanes, a decent return here, Ron Fawarda. That's how you want to start the year. And I guess right away, Ron, the first question I'm just going to ask you, 600 plus days for the majority of the coaching staff, the players, everybody involved on the gridiron here today. How much is ring rust going to be a factor? Ring rust is going to be a huge factor for both of these teams. Both of these teams have new coaching staff. You're going to see a lot of turnover in players. You're going to see a lot of new faces and new positions. I think the key to this game is going to be which team can, can take the adversity that the, COVID, that, that the COVID pandemic has had us 
and which one can overcome? The Baby Blue Sound Crew, that's those Hamilton Hurricanes right now. They're going left to right on your radio dial. They're led by Ethan Bellback. Remember, he was a 63% passer last time he was on the field. It's a flea flicker out of the gate, and it's picked off by the Beef Beaters. Oh, my word, staying on his feet and galloping up the field, eventually being split down to the ground. Not a great play by Jordan Wright. Jordan Wright does a great job of just recognizing, understanding his zone responsibility. This is going to be a staple that you see from a Gavin Lake-led offense and defense. I want to bring in KJ Kenemy right now. We're going to get into the starting lines, but man, oh man, a flea flicker. I love the style of offense to start the game, but it backfires on the Hurricanes. It's a pick through Jordan Wright. Yeah, and you know, John, you talked about the defense. That D-line got a lot of pressure on him there. Matthew LaBelle, Sidhu Karen, uh, Dylan Thomas, and the guy out of Connecticut, John, Jordan Fletcher, watch him today. He's going to be all over the field for the beefs. Ron for Warder, the flip scripts just, whoa, just like that. Well, Clark McCallum's now at the helm. He had 11 touchdowns and over 1,200 yards passing the last time he suited up for the beefs in 2019. Well, it looked like they were trying to get Hamilton to jump early. They didn't. It's a pass down the field. Uh, incomplete. Just out of the fingertips, I think, from Marcelo De Silva. Yeah, just off the fingertips, we got a little skinny post route there coming from the slot receiver. You can see it coming right here, coming in motion, little switch route, and he's got it wide open. Great job of sitting down, just can't quite squeeze it. Back to KJ for the starting line. Left tackle, Sam Ackham. Left guard, Ryan Mason. Center, David Legg. Right guard, Braden Bell. And a right tackle, the rookie, Bryson DeMello Jefferson. And remember, technically, the Beef Eaters are your defending OFC champions, despite it being well over six, 650 days since touching the gridiron. The second and 10 play coming up as McCallum will rush three to the line. Protected well in the pocket. Throws this one deep into the end zone. Some one-on-one -on -one battles. Is that going to draw the ire of the official? No. They say play on. I thought this was pass interference. I thought there was a little bit too much hand check in there from the defense. He did a good job boxing him out, not allowing him to come back to the ball, though. Good job by the DB. I thought there could have been a flag there. An yeah, interception. Right there. Sorry, Jay. An interception on the very first play defensively for the beef feeders, but offensively, they just get it clicking on this open drive. Yeah, and you know, now they come with this uh, Matthew Stackhouse. Uh, Gavin Lake brought him in outside of London. He's a pretty good kicker, so this is going to be about a 41-yarder, I think, or 42-yarder, John, from the left hash. Just a minute and a half into this football game, and an opportunity for the home side to get the first points here in week one of OFC action, technically week two of CJFL action. Regardless of whether you're joining us from Hamilton or London or around the world, as this one is blocked by the Hurricanes. The loose change rumbles to the near sidelines. It looks like the bodies incarnate just pile onto each other. Who's got the pigskin? It's not going to matter, Ron. It's Hamilton ball. Well, actually, it was going to matter because the, the Hamilton Hurricanes actually touched that ball down the field beyond, beyond the line of scrimmage. So that is now a live ball. So, Hamilton does recover though, so they will go back onto the field. And they're gonna hope, Jay, that their second offensive player of the game goes a little bit better than that first flea flicker that was intercepted so kindly by Jordan Wright. Anyway, if you're gonna take a chance, take it early, right? Guys, but I, I agree with you. This is they need to settle down here, get into the but you can tell Hamilton they like to throw the football, John. It's gonna be a, a fun day. Kind of your day, you know, oop de hoop and all that kind of stuff. Well, again, the 2019 defending champions. Let's not forget back in 2018, it was these Hurricanes going 8-0. Unfortunately, the loss to the Langley Rams in the semifinal. As it looks like Belbeck is, well, depleted out of the pocket and then failed in, becoming one with the carpet, Ron for Ward. And what a nasty hit laid down on Isaac McClellan. This is linebacker. Tyler Thompson coming up from the Sam linebacker oh position, word. absolutely scraping down, does a great job reading the back and finishes the tackle. Tyler Thompson blew his nail, guys. Three years ago, went to Guelph, didn't work out. He's come back, his family's here, and we had a great interview with him, and just a great man. You'll know him, his uh, cousin, Ethan Martin. We've had to settle for video game style football for almost two years now. That looked like something out of Blitz, as essentially that will set the tone for this entertaining football game. An interception, a blocked field goal, and here on the second drive out of the pro set, it's Bellbeck hugging it deep again. Has a man down the field. This one is caught, reeled in by the 
the Hurricanes. First down as they cross over midfield. I believe that was Quinn Robertson in on the reception. And watch it here. It's that wheel concept. A little switch concept there onto the field. And just a great throw. I didn't think the guy was going to be able to get to it. But a great wherewithal of recognizing where the ball is. Speeding his arms up, making a great catch. Oh, Willie Mays Hayes on that catch. Yeah, a little disguised coverage. The beast went man on the short side and went zone on the wide side. And someone just got lost in the... Uh, into the open space. Both these teams finished 6-2 and two in the regular season in 2019. Ironically, they went 1-1 one and one against each other, and both teams won on the road. And again, if you recall, Ron, the game you and I called right here at Citywide was a 19-16 win for Hamilton as this play, well, gets disrupted by the Beefeater's defense. Pelvic refuses to go down, but they're not going to get any turf on this play. And, and watch Jordan Fletcher, guys, the kid out of Connecticut, put in the pressure, and then both, uh, I think it was uh, Cam and Thomas in on the tackle, guys. Yeah, Mo Kadri, the middle linebacker yeah. as well, really bringing the boom on that play. Yeah. This defense is going to be fun to watch, boys. There's some CGFL power rankings already released, by the way. The Beefeaters come in number 8. The Hurricanes come in number 10. Surprisingly, though, it's the St. Clair Fratman, number 6. That's the highest-ranked OFC team in the CGFL preseason power rankings. You think they're? You think the Fratmen are the team to be? Yeah, you know, and again, that's just the the rebranded Windsor AKO Fratmen now part of the St. Clair College. Oh, there he is! Defense There's wins you championships, and well, you called it, Jay Fletcher, right on the money. But a late flag oh, here geez. might disrupt that play. Yeah, just like you said, John. You see the technique that Jordan was watching on the replay. Just a great uh, inside out move, and just makes just bowls him over. And they don't need to take these dumb penalties early. We'll see what happens around the call. I, this might be offsetting against uh, against both of them there because there was an extracurricular at the end of the play downfield. Both a, a beef eater and a hurricane player were involved. So let's see who uh, what happens with this uh, call. Both teams, by the way, were positive in the turnover battle their last time they were on the field in 2019. Hurricanes were a plus seven. Beefeaters were a plus five. And, well, right now going well for the Beefeaters. Plus one already in the opening quarter of the season. Yeah, and that, that penalty, guys, was on uh, Cam Sadu. And I'm sure Gavin Lake's not going to appreciate that. you got to keep your composure, especially early in a ball. Well, especially, Ron, when it moves the chains deeper into your territory, giving a Bell Beck led offense that is still, well, we'll say stuttering to find its step. I think you know, this is going to be an early thing in the season. You're going to see the defense is way ahead of the offenses that tends to be the case early in football seasons. And again, this is CJFL Week 2 action, but the opening contest of the Ontario Football Conference 2021 season. Belbeck protected in the pocket. It collapses as he hucks this one deep. Does he have a man downfield? Oh. Incomplete. A chance Belbeck there, Ron, for almost intended. another interception for the Beefs. What coverage, guys. A really good coverage, but this ball just falls right through number 12's hands. Jeremy Hicks had it in the end zone. It just went right through his hands at the end there. He should have had this ball. Hard to believe, though. you got to go all the way back to 1999. That's when the Windsor AKO Fratman prevailed over the Okanaga Sun, 32-24. to That's the last time an OFC team has won a CJFL championship. Why do I bring that up? Well, the OFC hosts the CJFL championship this year, scheduled for December 4th. Really looking forward to the potential of broadcasting that with you as well, John. Belbeck on the play action, it collapses. He's gonna just toss up a quail. He's lucky that also didn't get picked up. Back to back incomplete pass will bring up third and 10. Jordan Fletcher, guys. That's all I'm gonna say with the whole D-line, John. It was a screen pass, but you can just see the motor of this kid Fletcher. And that D-tackle, Cam Sadu makes up for his penalty right there. Fletcher the land shark for you early here, Ron? Yeah, like these guys are just, like, they're, they smell blood and they're going for it. This defense is flying around the field. That is a, that is a trademark of a Gavin Lake-led football team. Hurricanes recently signed this, gentlemen. It's Jared Fernandez Brown, the kicker and place kicker for these Hurricanes. And he's going to try and pin the beef eaters deep here with about 10 16 remaining here in this opening quarter still looking for the goose eggs to go away on the city wide sports park scoreboard so here we are the punt Ooh. from right at midfield almost getting a hand on that one for the beef eaters was tyler thompson this one goes near the hurricane sideline and it'll be the beef eaters from around the 25 taken back return. over on the offense Nick McKenzie on the return there. He got a, does a good, good job of just flagging this ball down. 
getting positive yards. You got the ball beyond your 20. You're in plus territory there. That's good. That's a win for the special teams. There's, uh, again, a baseball tournaments and all sorts of other sporting activities happening here at the Citywide Sports Park. I find it funny that the baseballers come over after their game's done to check out this CJFL action. Yeah, you know, John, I was also going to say, Tyler Thompson, welcome back. The South uh, graduate, uh, he went to Guelph. I uh, played Junior Mustangs and now with the Beefs after that horrific injury, and he's all over the field, guys. Are we going to get a dose of Tazzy Vang Bell? Remember, he had 348 yards on 17 catches and three touchdowns the last time he suited up in a Beefs uniform. This looks like it's a pass early, but there's a flag on the play. They're going to huck it deep. Why not? It is caught at midfield. 40, 30, 20, 10. You got Beef. Yeah, touchdown, but this one might be coming back, KJ. We got have multiple flags. So multiple flags are going outside. Guys, that was an 82-yard play, I believe. Unbelievable throw. And like you said, they're ready for Tazzy. They sugar blitz. They brought everyone to the line of scrimmage and play action. And what a throw by McCallum, the fifth-year starter. And again, Spencer Foster on the receiving end of this just does a good job of running underneath the ball. And for now, Ron, it looks like this touchdown is going to count. It's a mammoth 82-yard touchdown strike for the Beef Eaters to break up the goose eggs. You're going to have a unnecessary roughness at the end of the play. The Hamilton DB, I missed the number, ran into Spencer at the end the there. And uh, that was a little bit much. And I think we had an offside yeah. up here as well. So they declined those penalties. Hamilton and an objectionable conduct after the... I didn't know you can dance in the, in the CJFL guys play. or as a receiver. Well, no, you can't, which is why they just called objectionable conduct and unnecessary so, so roughness. They, they so those two penalties yeah. are offsetting. The offside, the decline it, touchdown, beefs. What do you think of McCallum right now? Guys, I mean, he's just, he's doing the air out of the football. The air show was going on, and right now he's airing it out. Well, McCallum and Belbeck combined for 27 touchdowns, again, in their last regular season dances. And you would assume that these guys do like to huck the pigskin around, and that's evident here early from Citywide Sports Park. You know, we talked about a little bit off the air about how we, we kind of expected a change in the offensive philosophy from the Beef Eaters, who were really a run-centric team. They're throwing the ball all over the ballpark this year. As we're still sorting things out, I think they have to record who had the objectionable conduct, so the unnecessary roughness. You get three of those in the game, you don't play in the next one. So they're going to go for the PAT now. After, well, again, the confusion a little bit after all the laundry is sorted out from the so officials. Go. The touchdown what? is good. The touchdown is good. Objectionable conduct against the Beef Eaters. That was for a little dance, and then at the end the of it, hurricanes. the hurricane player ran into him. That's why you got the so unnecessary roughness and the offsetting 15-yard penalties on that. So Stackhouse, remember, already had a field goal down. blocked in the opening drive for the beef feeder. He's going to get a little bit of confidence boost here if he can just nail this PAT. It's a 6-0 game, though, for the beef eaters. Again, an 82-yard strike. Lots of confusion with all the laundry on the field, but it's finally been organized, and the PAT is away. This one... Up and good. Wow. I mean, that was a bullet for a second there. I thought he might have missed the fork to the left. Almost hit Pete up in the uh, end zone cam there. Ooh, look, uh, the over. Number 20, the Spencer Foster on that He's touchdown reception, guys. Again, just a simple go route on the outside. They got something going there. And if you would have played it at the very end, you would have saw the little dance by Foster. That's a no-no. And then the hit by the Hamilton player. That's a no-no as well. How much, though, again, going back to the term ring rust, does that play a factor knowing that he hasn't been on a field for 600-plus days in order to... And then you do something big like that, an 82-yard dance there. And, you know, Ronnie, you got to be pretty excited after all that time off. You know, as a coach, you always want to tell the kids to play discipline, to play smart. But after 600-plus days, one year and 10 months, go ahead and dance a little bit. Yeah. So the Beef Eaters, again, put out a record in their franchise 326 points forward and only had 20 or sorry 87 points against in that 2019 season but it was good enough for a 6 and 2 record ironically that's not their best record in franchise history they went 7 and 1 twice in 2012 and in 1990 and had an 8 and 2 record back in the old 10 game schedule in 1976 so again i'm going to throw this out there to you Ron right now where would you predict the beef eaters to end out the regular season record wise what do you again it's really hard to say how things are gonna like fall up you know but this has been a really impressive uh, start for the beef eaters 
you know, a six and a, a seven and one, six and two record, I don't think is out of the realm of possibility. So back up the field come the Hurricanes. It's going to be led, I believe, by Reese Ruspi. Yeah, Gimme on there again. Again, uh, a kid I know from way back from London Minor football days. This kid's a special team demon. Speed, he can hit. Ferocity. Look at they pinned the field again. And he's got a twin brother on the team too. Yeah. So it's interesting. Uh, Gavin's got a lot of depth. Uh, I think John, when I talked to him. The depth is just so great at defense. Any of their first two lines, they've got quality ball players out there. And uh, like I said, this beef defense, I think they're going to be lights out this year. So it's Jordan Wright and Spencer Foster leading the way right now for the beef feeders. You got to go back to that right interception and then Foster, the 52 yard hookup with his quarterback in McCallum. Bell Beck and the Hurricanes. You know, no rest for the weary. They're going to have to get off the schnei right now. Down by seven here on the road in this opening game of the season. Bell Beck leading the charge off the fingertips of the receiver, which rushes in to the Beef Eaters, well, lineup. Yeah, I get Kyle Che on the uh, far side uh, corner spot on the coverage there in that trail position. You can see the Beef Eaters are playing a little bit of a switch man on the, uh, on the weak side of the field and some zone on the back side. So look for them to continue doing that. And pressure, pressure, pressure seems to be the name of the day. How much pressure, KJ, do you put on your team, whether you are Hamilton or London, into this game? Again, I'm going to keep spinning that record that's broken. 600 plus days, 600 plus days, 600 plus days. Well, London will go on the road for their next two contests, playing at the new Quinty Skyhawks at Loyalist College on September 5th. And then they'll take on the St. Clair Fratman, a new entity, if you will, on September 11th. Well, Hamilton's going to host the GTA Grizzlies and as well the Quinty Skyhawks. That's all, the games are in Brantford, ironically enough, not in the Hammer. Yeah, and I can tell you why after, John. So Hurricanes throw it in over to the left side hastily, and unfortunately not reeling it in is Quincy Bellinger. Second down. So it'll bring up second down quickly. And going back to that adage of uh, what's up, Jay? So Ivor Wynn is only allowing the Ticats to play with COVID. All these restrictions. There's not many fields out there, guys, that you can run even for us in our program. And uh, the Beasts can't even get Western. So basically they have to play their game, home games out of Brantford because they've got no field to play at in the city because of the COVID regulations, because high school football is coming really Ron, how smart it is it for Gavin Lake? And we're going to talk about him in just a moment, the new coaching staffs for both these programs. But again, how big is it to practice here knowing that all their home games are going to be here going off of what KJ just mentioned? Huge advantage knowing the field, knowing how the wind blows. Knowing Bell how Beck sacked. Sorry to interrupt there, but again, Bell the Beef Eaters defense standing Rock tall. And I believe the first one in there, Karn Sadu. Yes, yeah, Sadu and Ethan Reed Bell. kind of had a, a quarterback sandwich there. Number eight <laughs> finishes Third the job. Nine. What I was saying, though, this is a, uh, this is a facility here that London has that if you don't practice here, you don't understand how the wind blows here and how it can change direction so fast. And again, knowing this field where it was grass, knowing it now it's turf, knowing how the grass, the field turf feels underneath your feet, it's a huge advantage for the beef feeders this year. Hurricanes new coaching staff was announced on Twitter earlier last week. Jay Hayes, the head coach and offensive coordinator, will be Dave Missions on the defensive side of things, and then Gavin Lake for these beef feeders. He's got lots of experience in the CFL, KJ, as well with the Argos. Can you talk about Gavin a little bit, the new bench boss for the home team? Yeah, Gavin's coach right from BC. He's won some junior championships out there. He's uh, he's went, he's went been pro. He's been in, in, the, in Europe. Uh, won an, uh, a great cup with the Argos the last time they won a few years back in that thrilling game, John. And, uh, you know, also he's been working with Junior Mustangs for a few years. Just a guy that, that's come back after Jesse did such a great job uh, last year, bringing the beast back into prominence, and now he's going to looking to take the next step. Alex Schleihoff doing a great job as their cameraman, getting those sexy, I knew we were use that word lightly, Ron, Hawaiian shirts on the coaching staff of the Beef Feeders. Uh, you're a fashionista, Ron. I want your comments on this. I, you know, I, I really like the, I like the idea of the team building, which is why they do it. I, I'm going to call out a coach in particular. Halen, they call him Maverick. Ferguson, the quarterback coach. Yeah, this punt is oh. blocked by the Beefeaters. They'll recover near the end zone. 
They'll have it right on the doorstep of the Hurricanes. I believe that was Jordan Wright. If he is, you could pretty much give this kid the defensive player of the game already. A touchdown, or sorry, an interception on the very first play. And now he blocks this one. Huge right at the goal line for the Beef Eaters. What a great job. Full extension, understanding where the kick is going to be, the point of impact from the foot versus where the player is. He doesn't touch the player. You can see him coming right off the edge here again. He does a great job laying out right about now. Look at that. Just coming flat right across. It's been a rough Next day look. for the new faces of the kicking side. Yes, Stackhouse have his field goal blocked. And now Jared Fernandez-Brown for the Hurricanes has his punt blocked. And in all fairness, not really the boot is to blame. I mean, by the time they get the pigskin, they got a wall in front of them. <laughs> exactly. Great penetration. The goal line stance. Do the Hurricanes hold, or is it the Beef Eaters punching it through? The officials with a little bit of a theatrical pause. Well, Not for in. now, it's second down. Yeah. Not I want it. you to watch this on the right side, guys. Someone gets blown up from the Beefs. I don't know who it is, but that was a great job by that uh, defensive end. I think it's 91. Just trying to get the name. I saw LJ Dyer also go for a little bit of a tumble yeah. on that Raven play. Raven Laframboise. Uh, you know, we like to get those uh, nice drinks at Starbucks, John. Laframboise with the, you know, uh, knockout punch. So is this a say the big boy package out there right now for yes. Gavin Lake's crew? Absolutely. They got their, their truck formation in, John. After an 82-yard touchdown, they're going to keep it to McCalum. The touchdown is good. Now there's a flag on the play as they were shoving the quarterback over the line, Ron. Well, this is going to be coming back because it was thrown in the beef ears backfield. This could be a tandem buck call. I'll we'll have to see what they get. Let's get the replay. I don't see the tandem. So I, I think it's just holding, Ron. We'll see what they call. Oh, it's offside. They're, they're calling. They're saying the beast move. Let's look at that one more time, see if we get any movement. Yeah, I think the left tackles in, Ron. Not sure. I didn't quite, didn't you, quite you catch it. see it right there. He's kind of moving before yeah. the snap. That's what always what happens early in the year. You know, you're talking about early season. You haven't played in how many days, John? I mean, <laughs> you're going to have <laughs> offensive miscues, and that's a tough one to give away a touchdown. And now you're going, you know, second and long. Well, something we haven't mentioned, although I know Beef Eaters fans would hope we don't mention it, was actually the last time we talked Beef Eaters football was a 51-1 to final for the Saskatoon Hilltops, the nine-time defending CJFL champions. And as one life side as that score sounds, it really wasn't that close, John. <laughs> you and I were there. We kind of called that game, and it was it got ugly fast. So here we go. Instead of going with a goal line package, they're going to get McCallum back into a shotgun position. Swings it over to the right side. This one is caught, leaping towards the end zone. Touchdown, Beef Eaters, Danny Bine. Danny Bine on just a swing pattern right away. They recognized it right away. They brought a little bit of pressure. Nobody picked up the back. Whoop. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. In a weird way, KJ was the penalty beneficial because it seems like they couldn't breathe right on the goal line. They got some separation, and all of a sudden, they're able to swing it to Byron into the end zone. With a short time of practicing, only two months, you practice more out of shotgun than you have out of truck. So, yes, John, you're right. That's that's It actually helped them out. That'll go down as a receiving touchdown. He had four rushing touchdowns in 2019 on 57 carries where he had 465 yards under his cleats. Yeah, and, and right now the Beef's another penalty, 15 yarder, John. I mean, this has got to stop. I mean, Gavin Lake's going to be fit to be tied. We know him. He's pretty intense. Well, I mean, I'll say this. Not necessarily the worst problem to have when your team is up 13 nothing in the first quarter with about 6.49 remaining in it as this one will be held down and booted through. And again, Ron, I know going way, way, way back, August 24th, 2019, but it was right here at Citywide. Hamilton versus London. London controlled the opening half of action in a tight defensive affair. They certainly didn't have the 14-0 lead in the first quarter that we're seeing here today. But Hamilton, through special teams and defense, chipped away with field goals, especially later in that second half. They won. 19-16 to prevail right here at Citywide on the road. It really was a classic C CFL or Canadian football game where it was a lot, a lot of possession. Of, yeah, a lot of possession, a lot of field position. And what you're doing is you're playing chess on the field. And you're understanding where you are, how the other teams are playing and everything else. And that's what they were doing in that game. Both teams did a great job that game. KJ, you're mentioning an obvious point that Coach Gavin Lake's going to talk about, which is penalties regardless of how this game boils down. But Again, how much weight or severity do you take out of this contest, whether you prevail like the Beef Feeders, or, or let's say Hamilton comes back, how much weight are you taking into week 
two of OFC action. It's huge because you haven't played, and there's only a six-game schedule, I believe, John. So, you know what? These wins are important, and, and you want home field in the playoffs. So this is a huge... It'll be a great boost to start the season 1-0. So Reese taking the you know the booster jets right up the far sidelines Ooh. in front of the Beef's bench. He got wrapped up on the ankles and eventually clobbered That's up high. Looks like it'll be around the 30-yard line there, Ron. The yeah, that's the 30-yard line on that. The, you know, I love the aggression that the Beef Eaters are playing with. They're definitely being the bullies out in the field right now. But these penalties, I'm just saying it. Someone's going to get themselves in trouble. And remember the three URs, you don't play next week. This yeah. team is good, but it doesn't have the depth. How much pressure now goes on Ethan Belbeck? He's down by two majors here in the opening quarter of play on the road, KJ. Lots of football to go, but an important drive. You know, at least get some first downs and flip the field, John, at this point. It's very important in Canadian football, three downs. you got to get the ball moving. If you go two and out here, you're putting your, your, your defense in a real tough spot. Not that long ago, the Hurricanes had quite the dynasty in this league, winning back-to-back -back championships in 2010 and 11. In fact, Ron, they made five straight championship appearances between 2010 and 14. Balbeck keeps this play alive, finds a receiver down the near sidelines, and he'll be shoved out of bounds right at midfield in front of a broadcast booth, Ron. I didn't mind that play at all, the completion through Luca Jones. Yeah, good job, Travis Clark coming over from the safety position. Wrapping them up, but again, the story of the day, the pressure from the defensive line. Again, Belbeck's got to step up, scramble a little bit, buys himself a bit of time. Yeah, Belbeck, cool, calm, and collected. Just going back on my last point of maybe he's not feeling the pressure at all down by two majors, Jay. Yeah, he's a veteran, so you know he's been here before, and uh, you know he's he's you can tell he moves really well in the pocket. Three swag to the line for the Canes. It's going to be a run play, though, up the middle. They're going to try and get the ground game going, and they pick up about three or four yards here, Ron, and finally enter Beef Eaters territory. Yeah, just a straight-ahead dive play or an inside zone play on this. Straight ahead. Great double team at the point of attack from the Hamilton line, pushing away the big nose tackle, squirts in for a gain of seven. Javante Stanley on that carry. Remember, Jay, he had five touchdowns, 55 carries in 2019, 277 yards, so maybe more of a bulldozer approach, but we saw it work there for a handful of yards. Javante Stanley, remember that name. He's a, he's a great A player, John. If he gets going in the run game, watch out. And again, just a reminder, only 200 spectators were allowed within the vicinity, but what I'm loving is the amount of people around the cages, if you will, around the fence lines, technically not in the park, but still enjoying Beef Eaters action. And if you're the Hurricanes fans, I mean, you had a pretty good contingent roll down the highway for you. They're going to go back to the ground attack here, Ron. I think this time it's Isaiah Smith, though, on the carry. And they're only going to get maybe a yard if they're lucky, though. I don't even think they get back to the line of scrimmage, if that. And again, a little bit of extracurricular <laughs> at the end here. The games within the games. A beef, uh, uh, all I know is a beef eater fell down. No call was made. And everybody in a blue uniform middle pointed and laughed. So that's got to feel good when you try and sell a call and it doesn't work <laughs> out. Yeah, again, brings a, again no gain on the play. Uh, on just basically the off tackle to the left there. Uh, Hamilton's got to come up with something. They needed more out of that drive than like seven yards rushing. And the last punt was blocked, right, guys? So special teams, like you said, John, so important. And this is the thing about Gavin. You know, he is prepared. He's a guy that is meticulously prepared. Little things that he said would win this game. So far, the Beefs have the advantage. They're yeah. going. They're 2-0 in the turnover ratio. And with that being said, on third down, let's see if Hamilton takes a gander. And they will. Belbeck pumps it, then gets pumped himself by the Beef Eaters defense. The ball got loose, but man, oh man, the man child, if you will, number 56 and Jordan Fletcher in on the tackle. Jordan Fletcher just coming right off the edge has been unblockable in this game. John, he was my X Factor. I saw him last Saturday. Adam and I were here with uh, Zach. We were like, uh, I mean, I think Adam Merrill's was like in heaven seeing this guy put pressure. Like, just unbelievably, guys, different ways. He's just fun to watch. So turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. As you see on our screen right now, the defensive line for the Beef Eaters. You talk about these guys have been so studly to start this game. These guys have really dominated the play. Football is decided in the scrimmage, in, in, the, in the trenches. At the line of scrimmage, the Beef Eaters 
defensive line is absolutely dominating Hamilton's offensive line. Two run to the line. Looks like they're just going to hand this one off. Slicing and dicing his way up the field. Close to the first down marker, though, for the beef feeders is LJ Dyer. You and I had the opportunity to call some Dyer dashes in the high school stages of yeah, his career. Yeah, a kid that I've known for a lot of years. Graduate of South, High, South Collegiate High in London, Ontario here. Fantastic kid. Really good low to the ground runner. Tough, but unfortunately, the call's coming back on a hold from yeah. the Beefs. Yeah, and I was talking to LJ before the season, guys. He came out, you know, first year at the Beefs, and he wasn't on top of the depth chart. He was frustrated. I said, that's that's the gig. Work your way up, and you can see LJ, one of the best inside runners you're ever going to see uh, coming out of the London area. But again, those nasty orange flags come back to bite the beef feeders. Jay, now again, 14 nothing. It's going to sting a little bit, but let's say they were down 14 nothing. Different story. Absolutely. <laughs> So McCallum hasn't been afraid to go deep in this game. They switch around Jair to the left side and send three to the line. It is McCallum getting flushed out of the pocket. He's going to take a lick, though, and only get about a yard or two on the play and some pushing and shoving after the play. I believe, Ron, they're actually going to get Braden Bell for the extracurricular. Yeah, and again, this is what's the, kind of playing on that edge, which is what you want to see, but you can't. you got to play with control. But their own line is young guys, and that is just a dumb penalty. I mean, it was a good tackle. I mean, McCallum ran, and then you do that, you could get thrown out of the game, and they're actually pulling him right now, which is smart. But I'm going to tell you something. I won't be surprised if Gavin calls a timeout here and gets his guys uh, in line. Well, I have to correct myself because they're pulling out Wolf Sim. Oh, was it Wolf Sim? And I thought it was Braden Bell that actually got the hit in on the hurricane 60, player. 60, yeah, it was Bell. Yeah, it was. And, and, in all fairness, the only the only little credit I'm going to ring the bell on is that, you know, you, you, somebody takes a lick at your quarterback, especially early in the season, maybe you're going, hey, stay away from my boy. And here's another thing. That was after the, that was after the, after the, uh, after the whistle, whistle was blown. Yeah. So you take the, you lost it down, and you move it back for 15 yards. <laughs> so the thing is, the quarterback's running. It's one thing if it's a dirty hit. That's not... That was a dumb, dumb move. Second right and a country mile for the Beef Feeders. Luckily, they're up 14 0 in this opening game of the Ontario Football Conference 2021 season. As they're going to swing this one over to the side, it's in and out of the fingertips. It'll be an incomplete pass, our first little taste, if you will, of Taz Van Bell. Yeah, Taz Van Bell, just a little swing pass where they, they take the counter and they just come back with a swing to the backside. It's kind of like a screen or something like that. That's all you're trying to do is get the ball to your athlete in space. Yeah, Jay, you've seen Taz Van Bell develop. We saw him almost as an epic running back at the junior varsity stage. Uh, how do you feel like he's evolved in a sort of the slot back position? So I'm talking to the coaching staff, Chad Stewart. Gavin Lake, Kurt Benacord. What Tazzy does well is run outside zone and you get him the ball in space like Ron said on those bubbles and swings. Uh, he's really feeling really good coming into this game. He's banged up a little bit, you know, missed a couple practices, but he's ready to go and guys, I think this is a kid that can really have a great season, just like Javante Stanley can for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Matthew Stackhouse back near the 30-yard line for the Beef Eaters, ready to boot this one away. And I believe it's Keyshawn Jordan back around the 35 for the Hurricanes waiting for it. They're actually going to avoid Jordan, go closer to the beef feeder sideline, and man, oh man, talk about the coverage team there, Ron. Cody McRoberts is all I have to say. Cody McRoberts, linebacker, special team demon, contact down. That's been the story. Contact down. There's not been a lot of yards after the after contact. Yeah, purposely for Hamilton. avoiding Keyshawn Johnson on that punt, and well, you can clearly see why. Is there really wasn't much time to breathe for the punt returner near the beef eaters bench? No. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. Sorry, guys. I the thing you were saying, John, earlier. Special teams, the little things. That's what's going to win this ball game. And like I said, you know, every series, well, we you know, the Beefs are winning that battle right now. Hamilton's got to start making some, you know, little plays, little things to get back in this game. There does appear to be a beef feeder down on the field. Maybe that's Kyle Che. I see 14 run, but maybe you have a better angle on it. Yeah, I don't, unfortunately, have a better angle. 39, guys? No, it was Kyle Che, number 14, making his way on his own accord to the trainer's bench here for the beef feeders. So I'm going to put you in Coach Hayden. 
Hayes, that's Jay Hayes, the head coach, and the offense coordinator for the Hurricanes right now, KJ. What do you do? You're down 14-0. There's less than three minutes to go here in the opening quarter. Lots of pigskin left to be played here at Citywide Sports Park. But again, you you got to start somewhere. You need points at some point. Get the ball to Javon, uh, Javante Stanley. You know, run the football. Establish the old line uh, presence. Work your play action game. I think that's where you need to be right now if you're Jason Hayes. Belbeck going back to work for the Hurricanes. Looking around for an open target. This one, though, a little miscommunication, if you will, between him and Luka Jones. Pass, Jones stopped, went to his left, and the pass is more upfield from Belbeck. Well, again, the pressure from the beef eater defensive line is causing the quarterback to slide in the pocket. He's sliding to the right. And they're not coming, they're not following their scramble. I was gonna drills. say to that point, the receivers are not helping out Bell no. back when he is in scramble mode because they're not, let's say, getting into those fortuitous opportunities to lead him down the field. Yeah. Yeah, I I personally I'm surprised Hamilton hasn't taken advantage of number 88. Quinn Robertson is a big receiver out of the slot. I think he's a mismatch, you know, watching this kid run and everything else. But again, they've taken a shot at him once. Belbeck pump fakes a couple times and fires a dart down the field. It's caught, but he's out of bounds. That looked like a decent play out of the gate, but Keyshawn Jordan ran out of real estate. Ran out of real estate fast, but again, it was the, the I hate to say it sound like a broken record. It's the pressure from the defensive line. The beef eaters are not blitzing. That's what's it's scary man, about it's this. It's just a four-man pressure. And then again, Jordan Wright, John, great coverage on the play. So they understand the landmarks. They understand that they can just play, you know, sit back in coverage if they're going to get that type of pressure all day from the front floor. Well, the real reason there's a goose egg on the board for the Hamilton Hurricanes is Jordan Wright. Interception on the very first play of the game from the line of scrimmage for the Hurricanes, followed up with a massive block punt on Jared Fernandez Brown to put the beef eaters right at the Hamilton goal line, which eventually was capped off with an LJ Dyer touchdown. As we see oh. Brown back again, almost punt. He was hit though. Unfortunately, this is going to benefit Hamilton if you're a beef eaters fan. I mean, no loss for where Cody Don't McRoberts just, well, fell into the kicker. Well, <laughs> again, he, he's coming straight up the gut on this one. Hamilton's got to fix their special team. They've got to kick, fix their kick coverage on this. Because that is three times now Contacting that the they have had the pressure on the punt. They've had one block. And I said this before, Jared Fernandez-Brown, he, he gets so that ball coming. before he can even go through his reps yes, to get it away. And there's a wall of red coming out. Yeah, him. absolutely. And, you know, you think McRoberts, like you said earlier, guys, I'm not sure if it was you or Ron, uh, John, that said it. Great job of blocking the kick. This time, not so much running right over the, you know, the kicker. Great pressure, but it also be aware of where you are because, again, that was a two and out. And, uh, you know, uh, like I said, if Hamilton keeps going two and outs, guys, it's going to be a long day. Not all the faces return, but some of them are remaining from that 2019 OFC semifinal between these two teams. And again, Hamilton and London saw each other in 2019 on three occasions, splitting the regular season one apiece with each team winning the road contest. Both finished with a 6-2 and two record run. How much does it stay in the memory banks, though, of the players right now on the field? I don't think it stays in the memory banks as much as because there's been such a huge turnover yeah. in the players. A lot of moon phases have gone by, too, in the yeah, meantime. Yeah, you know, and a few more gray hairs on the beard as well, John. That's, that's right. So those baby blue sound crew, Hamilton Hurricane uniforms, try and get back to work. This one a bit of a quail. Did he dig it out? They're going to say it was complete? Yeah, I think he got his hands under it. And here's something to consider Quincy, as well, guys. Quincy Bellinger almost with a you know a diving center field catch keeps the play alive. Good job getting his hands under it. It is starting to rain a little bit. That's going to make the ball a little bit slicker as well. That looked like John Irvin playing uh, center yeah, field. Yeah, I saw him yeah, make a little play bit like of that. center field there. Right there, yeah, <laughs> just digging it out, you know. <laughs> well, again, for the bee feeders, rain might be a little bit of an issue as there is a bit of the wet stuff expected for the next 45 minutes to come across the radar. At kickoff, Ron, it was 32 degrees. And it felt more like 39 degrees with the humidity. How much do you think that plays a factor in today's game, knowing that you got to keep hydrated? That's going to be a huge factor again, you know, again. How much conditioning, well, how much work have these teams put in? Right we know the beef eaters in Hamilton be working on it. We're going to flag for, I think, an illegal substitution, substitution here at the very end of the field. So this is coming back against Hamilton. Yeah, yeah our PA announcer Dave Woody here Too says it's an illegal huddle. substitution. Too many men in the huddle. And like you just said, uh, they're going to get the yards right back. And yeah. I, I, again, I'll uh, spinning that record, kicking on that unfortunate horse. 
I mean, how much does this go back to almost two years of being off cage? Big time, big time. I mean, it's 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 hard, especially on the road. You know, your first game's on the road. It's tough. I'm going to blame all my mistakes on the same thing. As Belbeck fakes the pitch to the left side, carries it himself, steamrolls over a beef eater, just trying to hunt his way to the first down, and he does. What a man play by Ethan Belbeck. But there's a flag at the end of this play, too. Yeah, you know, there's going to be a flag. I'm going to check to see what the call is. But this is a great job. They fake the toss. He sees the pressure right away, understands it's not there, pulls the ball down, and that's a quarterback. That's a leader of the team saying, Get on my back. I'm going to carry you to a first down. You know, that had a little Chris Merchant-like action mm -hmm. when he led the Western Mustangs to a Vanier Cup. But that also reminded me of a play in Laval where he did something similar. It came right back. This <laughs> one looks like it might be coming back after Belbeck literally put his team on his so back, Jay. Yeah, so they're giving him the first down. So he got the yards the gained, and then the, the penalty takes him back. So it is a first down. <laughs> yeah, it was objectionable <laughs> conduct. We don't probably in the extracurriculars that would happen after the play, just as it has been on every play, this time they caught it against Hamilton. So we appreciate those joining us all around the world on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit a like button or maybe even the subscribe. Ron Forwarda likes you, so like him too. So this will bring up a first and ten, but pretty much from the same vicinity they started off this drive from. Bell back with three running the line, fakes the handoff, throws this one deep. There's a man down there, but only being able to get a hand on it is a beef eater in Both Jackson Wurstein. Down by Jackson Wurstein. Yeah, Jackson Wurstein's really worked hard. I was Second watching down. him in camp, and, and you could just see the great coverage and the ability just to knock the ball down. You know, John, I did see a guy open, but Belbeck, the pressure on Belbeck, he just doesn't have time to set, set his darn feet. Goes that, back. Was a, that was a three-man rush that time by the beef feeders. just for the record. They only sent three. They dropped nine into coverage. And still got pressure. Yeah. Beef feeders looking pretty good to start off this Ontario football opener as they're hosting the Hurricanes here. And like I mentioned before, though, this is technically week two of CJFL action as they're going to hand this one off but not going anywhere. The beef feeders just swallow them in the backfield. And once again, Jordan Fletcher, you mentioned the impressiveness that you got out of this young gentleman watching him on practice, and now you're starting to see it in the actual game, Jay. Yeah, the man from Connecticut. We're gonna have to go. I know, John, you got to slow him deep down inside for this guy. we got to find it, but the man from Connecticut is just, uh, and he's just, just a joy to talk to, just a positive guy. Uh, he's, you know, he's come in here uh, from the States and just fit in, and, you know, it's not easy, Ron and John, for a defensive lineman to learn the Canadian way this quickly. This guy could play next level, I think. Well, again, the huge difference that, you know, in the Canadian game and the American game is we have to give you yards. So understanding that as an American player, understanding the concept of that is huge. This punt should be the final play oh, wow. of the opening quarter. Almost blocked again by the beef eaters. The loose change rolls towards the Hurricanes bench and getting clobbered down. I think that's Nick McKenzie on the return number five, but regardless, it will conclude the opening quarter of play. That will be the Tyler end Thompson of the first with the pressure on the punt there, number 31. Come right up the run. middle again. I, I don't understand Hamilton's. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of strategy, a lot of chirping, and a lot of talking between the teams, between the plays too, which could be leading to a lot more of those orange flags we saw in that opening 15 minutes, Jay. Yeah, and you know, again, being off, you're going to see a lot of these. You just hope they're not these type of penalties, because at the end of the day, like you said, it get cost you. You get thrown out of this game, you're on the next game, guys. So you know, you got to be smart. Jordan Wright started this game off on the right foot, Ron for Ward. An interception on an attempted flea flicker on the opening play of the game from the Hamilton Hurricanes. It didn't necessarily work out for that particular drive for the beef eaters, but eventually an 82-yard pass from McCaleb to Spencer Foster got it up 7-0 with 9.32 remaining in the opening quarter. And then a huge block following up the INT with his defensive performance again by Jordan Wright. Set up the beef eaters eventually for an LJ Dyer catch and dash. Yeah, you know, and, and really the, the story for me for the first quarter of the game has been the pressure and the dominance of the defensive line for the beef eaters. I'm going to sound like a broken record on it all day, but if you can't fix that, it's your quarterback's in for a long day. And again, another objectionable conduct call against the beef eaters. Beef eaters again put out a franchise record, 326 points forward in 2019. Is this a team that you're seeing with a 14-0 lead that could potentially do that again? 
it's hard to tell it's early, but they definitely have the veterans drawn, and they do have the horses, Burn so it's, it's, it's possible. They go to the ground to attack to the left side, and stymied for the most part, though, by those baby blue uniforms. It looks like a lot of defensive substitutions coming up here for the road team. Yeah, Danny Brown with the, uh, just the outside zone play, trying to find somewhere to go. Good job of Hamilton of stringing it along the defensive line, filling in the gaps, not the giving him a cutback like lane. The feeder banged up, though, on the play. We'll put a pause to the action here at Citywide Sports Park. After we're done. And something you just don't want to see on either team in the opening game, especially like we keep mentioning, 600 like plus days the off. Some of these kids just must be so excited to get back onto the field and, and play the game that they love. And is that Danny B really out there? Yeah, that yeah. is. Unfortunately, the touchdown reception. And he's the starter, won the job, and you know, uh, and you know, hopefully he's going to be okay, guys. Great kid. Burn. The injured beef eater. You're right. It was Danny Bryan on yeah. the catch. That's second right. and eleven. So John, I just you know you, you like you said early in the game, it's tough. You know what I mean? Like, you lose a guy that you know have been waiting to play all this time. Let's just hope he's going to be okay. They've got great trainers over there. One thing Gavin's done, he's got a strength coach, John. Uh, he's really done a great job of recruiting a lot of top talent uh, from the Jesse Maddox championship team. So McCallum's going to go back out there, shy of Danny Bryan, though, and that could be a major loss on this drive, though the beef eaters have a comfortable 14-0 lead in the early stages of this second quarter. This one is caught around the 25-yard line, being split between two tackles as he's down to the ground is Wolf Sim. Wolf Sim, just a little out pattern. One of my favorite patterns in the Canadian game. It's the out to the wide side of the field. When you're in that trail position, it's almost uncoverable. Good gain on the play for the beef eaters. And if you see the replay, watch Bryson DeMello Jefferson. This is a guy, guys, that you know had to start a lot of football games. Keeps working hard. Watch him on the right tackle, as you'll see it here. Does a great job of allowing uh, his quarterback to have space and uh, you know get that ball off. They don't get what they need though to move the chains. It'll force Stackhouse to go out there to punt this one away with 14:03 remaining in the second quarter of play. Ron, this is the lone OFC game tonight, but out west, the Edmonton Huskies take on the Edmonton Wildcats in an all Edmonton battle. That's a 7 p.m. Mountain Time kickoff. And tomorrow, in more OFC action, the St. Clair Fratman will be on the road to take on the GTA Grizzlies with a 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kickoff. Beware of the Fratman. They're very, very good, and they have a brand new facility down in Windsor that they can't wait to show off to everybody. Stackhouse to midfield, received by Keyshawn Jordan. Jordan trying to stay away from a couple tackles, eventually smothered down, though, by Cody McRoberts. And it seems like any time a special teams player is looking up with the pigskin in a blue uniform, Cody McRoberts is right there to greet them hello. First down no, just nowhere to go. You know, like great coverage on special teams. The speed downfield from the beef feeders on unreal, these special teams right is, is just phenomenal. And maybe this is just an eye test of me early, but it does appear outside of the battle of the lines, Jay, defensively and offensively. There seems to be a little bit of a, a size benefit to the beef feeders. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's been, they've worked hard at, at getting the size and guys that can move. And, you know, according to Roberts, guys, Special teams demon, I mean, he's just all over the field, and he's the starting Sam linebacker. As I mentioned, by the way, this is week two, technically, of CJFL action. Last week, the Hilltops, yes, those pesky Hilltops, if you're a Beef Eaters fan, picked up a victory with a walk-off punt rouge. Ron Forward, I know how much you like that for a Canadian play. Yeah, you know, I love the Rouge. There's nothing more Canadian than it means it stands for red. They won 18-17 through their punter, kicking it through the back of the end zone, forcing the Edmonton Huskies to fall to 0-1 on the season. There was some history made in that game. Emma Ray Dale became the first female to suit up in a CJFL game. The linebacker for the Hilltops again led them to that one point victory, 18 17, over yeah, the Edmonton Huskies. And kudos to her, you know, fantastic barrier to be broken. She'd be proud. Love to see more uh, girls playing the Canadian game. First and 10, Belbeck going to work. A plethora running the line. Pressure coming. Belbeck smothered. He avoids the pressure. Belbeck diving away from another tackle. Eventually taken down to the ground by who else? Cody McRoberts. But not after picking up, well, about seven or eight yards. And Jay, he truly made something out of nothing as the whole ball of red came down on him. Yeah, they went empty. Uh, he stepped back. The draw, QB draw, wasn't there. Somehow broke a tackle. I'll let Tim Tebow, who we saw this uh, spring get cut. But back in his day but I like this Belbic kid the, the pass before just a dart like you said John they're not out of this game it's early 14 nothing lots of football to go maybe Jacksonville will bring Tebow back now they traded Garden Minshew to the Eagles no nope. 
Maybe they'll get them from the Chargers then, Ron. That's no. a crappy team. Uh, the bell back on the handoff. Now they're going to go to the run play, and why not? Although, Javante Stanley, we mentioned this earlier in the 2019 season, he was more of a bulldog, if you will, a bulldozer. 277 yards on 55 carries, Ron. That's just over four yards a carry. He has five touchdowns on the ground. And they are tough, tough yards. This is a Mr. Inside for their Mr. Outside as well. He's a physical runner in between the tackles, but he's got a great stutter step as well. How important is it for Jay Hayes and these Hamilton Hurricanes to pick up some points on this drive? There's only 11.40 remaining here in the opening half of play. Yeah, this is the drive we were talking about. They're flipping the field. They're moving the football. Points are would be excellent right now just to give them some confidence. Keep an eye on the near sidelines for Devontae Hudson. I like that one-on-one -on -one matchup they got lined up here with Jordan Wright. Although Wright, again, with that INT. Bellbeck again, just completely put into the, <laughs> the blender, if you will. You look left, you look right, you try and step up the field. It's a see a red all around him, Ron. B-feeders blitz five on that particular play. Both edges crashed down. They had pressure from the middle. Just nowhere for the quarterback to go. Don't give me the Greg Popovich answer here, KJ. Outside of the offensive line just doing a better job, what does Hamilton have to do here to protect their star quarterback? Well, they're going to run the football because if you can run the football, at least that'll slow the pass rush down. Problem right now is that they're throwing a lot, and, and it's just the these guys are pinning the ears and just going after the quarterback. Bellbeck looked a little worse for wear, kind of walked it out and then came back into the team huddle. Keep an eye on him in this next play, Ron. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. He, I think he's taken a few shots in this game. Three swag to the line. They are going to go to the ground attack. Smart call, coach, and well, I guess that's why you do what you do best is, again, this time it'll be Javante Stanley again with the carry. Yeah, and I'll tell you right now, 56 for uh, the Beefs. He's just sending people all over the field and uh, just throwing guys around. And again, great, great uh, rallying into the football uh, from the defense. Again, Ron, the three man pressure seems to be. Uh, something Hamilton's really Yeah, I think Tyler Beaven, actually, so number 55 for the Hurricanes, hurricanes got beaten up on that last play as we got to pause here with 10-27 remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, you know, this, this is really game. You know, this was a great drive by Hamilton. No, I apologize. It's actually not Tyler Beaven. It's Chris Kostigan. That's London Beef Eaters. You think he's uh, just burnt out from the pass rush trying to pick up those blocks, John? I don't know. Well, there, it, this has been some high-intensity football put out by the Beef Eaters early, and uh, unfortunately, this is kind of what you'll get yeah. when two programs haven't played, as I mentioned again, in 679 days. And what I like about this, guys, is like you said, they didn't get the points, but they did flip the field. Very important here now their defense has to come out and get a stop and, and maybe get a shorter field, and, but they got to get some points here, right, Johnny? Well, and again, Ron, you go back to the point, though, of just Jordan Wright doing what Jordan Wright does best, an INT and a blocked punt hand. Hamilton does need a player to do something of the same they're, earth. They're coming with pressure again. I'm telling you, they're going to come with pressure again. And if you are Hamilton... Timeout taken by the Beef Eaters, out. mainly because Dylan Thomas was still on the field before the punt was about to be snapped. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You don't want to waste Eaters. those timeouts. And now that special teams guys led by Austin Scarpelli, Luke Thomas, uh, that's why they're bringing that pressure. If you guys remember, John, a few years ago when JP won his uh, second championship, that punt, the special teams punt block was huge for them that year. A year they weren't expected to win back to back, and that was the the, the special teams were the cornerstone. You know, if if they if they flip, Hamilton's done a great job of flipping the field here. Okay, they sustained the drive. Did they get points? No. But with 10 minutes and 15 seconds left in the second quarter, if they're able to pin the beefs down, that's kind of a win. That's what you're looking for. And now you can maybe play some defense, maybe get a break, maybe you can get the turnover. But if the beef eaters bring pressure and get this punt, get their hand on this punt, this could be game over at this point. And when they get back onto the field run, how are they going to get Ethan Belbeck some real estate? This is a guy that completed 116 of 184 passes. That's 63% in 2019. 16 dimes into the end zone, and yet stymied here in the opening two quarters of the 2021 season. I think you got to hit the swings. Oh, you got to run the ball. This one's blocked again. Zaddy. The beef feeders will recover it. Back the other way is Cody McRoberts. 20, 10. You got beef! It's a touchdown, London! I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. I saw this coming. 
that you can see them moving around. You got a flag for objectionable conduct. There's a great job of blocking this punt again, Jay. So Gammy Kazadi with the block. McRoberts taking it back. But man, oh man, what would be a play here today at Citywide without a flag being thrown? Yeah. And Kazadi, part of that 4x100 yeah. that lab when we did have high school sports, it was just uh, dazzling, and then, you know, everything kind of ended. But that great, uh, that last year, they were looking to break some records, and uh, high school sports yeah, was the, soft. Yeah, the, the twins there, you know, they're Gaddy and Gammy, they're two fantastic athletes, both of them physical players, fast, great feet, and again, they're first-year players, Jay. They're the, in their first year. They got a long career ahead of them if they're in front of the beef eaters. Stackhouse technically 0 for 1 in the field goal district to start off his OFC career, but he is 2 for 2 in the PATs looking for the hat trick here, Jay. Yeah, and they brought him in and they really believe in this guy. They do have two kickers on the roster, uh, John, but uh, uh, they have also Leo Centino, I believe, handles the punting duties. But uh, Stackhouse, uh, very impressive. To watch in practice. Brian Harkness, the holder out there, waiting for the snap for this PAT as he holds it down for Stackhouse, who splits Robert the upright. Good. And just like that, the ball leaves citywide. A common theme that I forgot from many years ago. <laughs> yeah, it, that's you know, it's great to be back out here and to hear the hear the pads popping. We got a little bit of a delay now as we thank the spectators for throwing the ball back into the field. By the way, a little bit of the rain that was present across the field, just a mist though, not really a rain, has gone away and out comes Mr. Sun. And I think that's my main question for you on this drive, both offensively and defensively. If you look to the western sky, you can't see much. So as far as a defensive player looking for a ball in the air or even a receiver going down, how much is this a factor right now with the setting sun here in the Forest City? It's tough because there is no good angle that you're going to catch this ball in for the next 45 minutes just because of the position of the field. And this one's going to be booted away from Hamilton's 50 J. Yeah, so another penalty. And again, the, you know, the, the unsportsmanlike, like it's, it's tallying up right now. It's got to be close to eight penalties that really you don't need. You're up 21-0. Hamilton, Hamilton will have a chance to recover at home, and I use air quotes as both those games will be taking place in Brantford. They'll take on the GTA Grizzlies on Sunday, September 5th, and then they'll also have to take on, well, the Quinty Skyhawks on September 12th, both in the telephone town. As they're going to try and get this one to the near corner, and coming back out with it are the Hurricanes. Not much real estate down the near sidelines. They make it almost to the 24-yard line, though, Ron. Actually, they got a little something out of nothing. Well, that's a good job. Again, the, the, the point, the single point at that point to kick the ball through the end zone really is kind of meaningless Bottom at this point. You're looking for field position, that, right field position, and field position. Parallax that's what they've done a good job. They're kicking the ball to the one First side of the field. Game, the speed of the beef feeders is getting half. down there, and there has been very little Two yard after contact. Mm -hmm. Gabe Reichert in on the tackle for the beef feeders. Thanks for making the trip. That's a big man running down the field there, guys. He's a D, uh, 90, he's listed at, uh, Gabe is listed at 6'4", 250, but he's a D lineman, and just excellent work there as he made the pressure, and, uh, and uh, you know, great, great pressure. So after a Kazadi block and a McRoberts return on the punt, it's unbelievable how the Beefeaters have, well, started this 2021 season after so many months away. And again, uh, and something they probably don't want to mention, but the last time they did taste action was a 50-point loss, 51-1, to one, to the defending the CJFL third. champions in the Saskatoon right Hilltops. I will say this, okay? If so you remember that game away. that we did, John, the speed difference between Saskatoon and London was significant. The eyeball test, I'm telling you right now, this beef eater team is significantly faster the across the, the board. And they have playmakers everywhere. First this team is legit. Is that again level. case KJ where Gavin Lake is now seeing where this team has to be at in order to be a nine-time defending national champion program like the Saskatoon Hilltop? Absolutely. It was a great uh, program out in BC. Uh, it took him a little while, but he ended up winning a national championship. Learned from his mentor out there. And I'll tell you, uh, this team here defensively is looking great. But even on the offense, guys, making some big plays. And special teams is dominant. Two options to the right side for Bellbeck. They're going to hand this one off, though, and a pretty decent play. It's a first down for Stanley on the attack. Again, a little inside zone play. And I apologize. It's actually Isaiah Smith on the carry that time. Down by Jared Hicks. 
John, do you remember the game that There's you called uh, the with play. the Hamilton uh, uh, Junior Tie Cats? They were able to, uh, you know, they were able to um, run the football with Smith and Stanley and win in a playoff game on a Friday night where the, you know, the Junior Mustangs were. The, you're just seeing it right here at the at the next level. Young running backs for Hamilton. Coach Jason Hayes must be very impressed. So London, folks, uh, their bring this up. Like, like I said, run the football. The football game, but here we slow go. that pass rush down. City of London. Hurricanes won a CJFL championship run back in 1972. That's where it won. They went 10 and 0. And they also beat up Adam Melrose's Oshawa Hawkeyes 59 nothing on the way to that 1972 championship. I did mention it, but losing to the Langley Rams in the Canadian semifinal. Yeah, yeah, that Langley team was loaded. Hamilton team. They're still fighting. Okay, like Make they're still fighting, the the but they have the got to run the football, slow down that pass that rush. If they don't, man, right? their quarterback's going to be in for a long, long day. And again, a rematch right now of the 2019 we OFC semifinal support. between the Hurricanes and the Beef Eaters here on Beefs TV. Thanks for How joining us on YouTube. If you're not one of the lucky 200 spectators that were allowed into the vicinity here today, flag on this play. Back to a dose of Isaiah Smith. Smith dives his way towards midfield right at the 55-yard line. Another late flag on the play. Tackled by a citywide monster. Number 67 went down early here, Jay, for the Hurricanes and James Sidus. Okay, we just got a third flag for objectionable conduct. I'm trying to see uh, who 90 got Dylan it. Thomas took it for uh, uh, London, uh, John, and uh, just, just not, just, I don't know. I, I, Great football game. We've seen some great stuff. Let's get our heads. You know, we haven't had football for a long time. Let's clean this up. That's part of it, though, too, Jay. You know, like these, none of these kids have played. A lot of these kids missed their senior year of high school. Now they're playing beef eaters. A lot of these kids thought they were playing beef eaters last year. Now they're doing something different. And and again, it's just that that bent up anxiety, a want to right. play. And I get that. I get that. But these are just after the play. You know, yeah. great, we saw a great run, a nice stiff run, stiff arm like uh, a la Derrick Henry, you know, from this, this kid Smith. And we're dealing with penalties. It's just slowing the, the flow. I get it, Ron. You're right. But in the same token, you know, we've got to have cooler heads prevail here and just let's play the great game that we have before us. It's almost like I don't want to be touched last mentality, too. Uh, you know, a guy makes a push and they always get the instigator, the retaliator, not the instigator there, Ron. And it seems like after each play, there's something being said or something being done. The retaliator does what he does, and the flag goes off. Offside against the beef okay, so it was offside the beef feeders, which is kind of what we thought. Then we had unnecessary roughness against the beef feeders, and then objectionable the conduct after the, the play up. against First the Hurricanes. For the Canes at 52 yard line. If this was a hockey game, John, I'll tell you, with three penalties, you could be out of the game right now. Well, it hasn't been a lot of football live action. But there's been football as we've had Euro Cup and Copa America Cup action earlier in spring. And maybe there's a lot of uh, flopping, a lot of theatrics, if you will, right now. A different kind of foosball being displayed. The foosball? <laughs> I know you're the foosball master there, Ron. So 8.45 now remains in the second quarter Somebody clock. It's a 21 nothing game for the Bee Feeders. Thanks to Spencer Foster, Danny Bryan, and Cody McRoberts. And, and again, that a lot of that is being, is coming off the pressure of the defensive line. The, the Bee Feeders have done a good job uh, of, of offering pressure. When they rush five, they're getting there. Hamilton's starting to get something going now. They're starting to run the ball. That's going to slow the pass rush down. The only way to take it out is to slow it down, run the ball, hit the swings, hit the little bubbles, get them running sideline to sideline, and that's the only way it's going to happen right now. Again, Hamilton will have a chance to get back on the right track next week if they can't do it here tonight in London. They'll take on the GTA Grizzlies Sunday, September 5th in Brantford. And then they also host the Quinty Skyhawks the following week on the 12th J. Yeah, Warren Goldie taking over that program. We all know Warren Goldie won a Vanny Cup here in, I believe, 93. They unfortunately lost to Calgary in 94, so good luck to him. Another uh, London area uh, Western Mustang player that's uh, doing his thing in CJFL. Three run to the line for Belbeck. They're going to hand this one off to Smith. Smith finds a gap to the left side. Smith to the first down marker and a little bit more. 
and interesting. They were with Devontae Stanley early. I don't know if he got hurt or they're just realizing Isaiah Smith is making for a better match right now. I, I think he's a little bit more physical. He's pressing the hole more, and he's got that explosiveness to break a tackle with a stiff arm and then get wide and upfield. And maybe more importantly, KJ, it's giving that just momentary lapse for Belbeck to breathe. Yeah, exactly. And the thing I like about Smith, guys, I mean, this guy does look like Derrick Henry, doesn't he, John? I mean, just, he can run upfield with a lot of, uh, you know, like looks like a truck, but he also has that stiff arm and he can make some moves on it too. Time is of the essence though, Ron, for Warder for these Hamilton Hurricanes. Again, down by three majors. I said this the last drive, and I think it's even more emphasized on this one. They'd like to get some points. Now, you, now you're in a point in the, in the game where you must capitalize. You've had a good drive going. You've got to keep it going. you got to get at least three if not seven. And as you say, that three Hurricanes run to the line. There's a flag on the play. Another dose of Smith up the middle, slicing his dicing between the hash marks. And no, actually that time, it's Javante Stanley. So now they're even confusing me with this dual hydra, if you will, in the backfield. Yeah, unfortunately, I believe this is coming back on an offside against Hamilton. What a, what a move by Stanley. To watch this, guys. On the draw again, Belbeck doing a good job. Again, how do you slow the pass rush down? This is the way you do it. Nice little draw. Unfortunately, oh, it's on the beef, so uh, the, the first down will stand, guys. First down, I thought it was the slot 21. that went, though, Ron. I don't know about you. Yeah, I, that's why I was going. I'm kind of looking and going. I was pretty sure, but I guess they called it for lining up offside. A lineman comes off in Ty Bennett, and now coming onto the field for the Hurricanes is Marcus Jones. So keep an eye on number 14, Jones, on this ensuing play with 7.41 remaining in the second quarter of play. Okay, we got a man down for the B-feeders on the far side of the field. And uh, out of this drive, guys, I don't know if you noticed, uh, was Fletcher. He's not in... Uh, Probably just uh, you know getting some rotation in. Ron for the opening game of the season, knowing that the next two games will be on the road. They got to travel all the way to Eastern Ontario to Quinty Skyhawk territory. That's Loyalist College, actually. And that'll take place on September 5th, and then they got to go well westbound from where they are here. They'll take on the St. Clair Fratman on the 11th. So that's only a six-day turnover between those two road games. That's two. That's two very very long trips. I uh, you know having coached in this area for a long time. The London Windsor rivalry at any level, at any sport, at is any always sport, massive. That's right. Multitude of flags on this play. This time, it's a handoff to Javante Stanley. I'm glad I'm going to get that right, but not being able to get it right. The are the players on the field right now as we get That's another flag good. on this play? So Good we've play. got, I Good believe we've got too many men from the beef eaters because the flags were thrown in the backfield it's of the early, defense right? from both corners. So I think that you had too many men for the beefs. It's a little bit of a disorganization everywhere right now, Jay. Said these are the penalties you expect, and uh, it just it just seems like they're just not lining up. Again, that one yard thing. Now we do have Fletcher back in the game. Now I do like uh, Dylan Clark that time making the play, guys, uh, on the tackle on a very very slithery. Yeah, Mr. Stanley. you gotta love this uh, August weather here in Canada, Ron Forwarda. It <laughs> seems like a beautiful, bright sky, but yet a misty rain coming down, sort of a disillusionment on Citywide Sports Park. Yeah, you know, again, it's it's kind of what we thought was going to happen. We're going to have a little bit of rain, a little bit of sun, a little bit of wind. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully none of the white stuff. W no, no. <laughs> <Not> like, <laughs> like, let's be real. We've had some of that here at the Citywide. Remember? The last time we broadcast oh, the game, it man. was cold. It was very, yeah. very cold. Yeah. And of course, our MVP, Alex, up top there, getting rained on, John. How does this timeout or sort of injury timeout, if you will, benefit Hamilton? Yeah. So an uh, inadvertent whistle? Well, it was, oh. it was an illegal substitution as well. I guess they were saying no flag. I don't know what just happened. So something about the penalty being declined and then the Blues going back to the original spot. So it's a first and 10 Hamilton. That's all you really have to worry about. Whistle. That's okay, right. I got you. All, right. <laughs> all I heard was inadvertent whistle, penalty declined. Okay, you've got both running backs, 24 and 34 in the game now. That's the first time I've seen this happen. And why not? I mean, it's been one or the other. And now in this particular play, you certainly won't know until it's snapped. A low snap, faking the handoff. They're going to try and go deep on this one. Off the fingertips of the receiver. I think that was Keyshawn Jordan at the back of the end zone. Keyshawn Jordan, just a little, just a corner route there. He's wide open on the coverage, right off the fingertips. Take me through that play design. Yeah, just, just like, again, they're running the football. Running the football. Nice little you know, bad snap, picks it up, gets the play action, holds the linebackers. He gets the one-on-one -on -one coverage, just misses. Belbeck, uh, just, just a, a good throw. It's got to be a little bit better, but just a nice play. 
uh, but unfortunately didn't execute it. Did. And again, a reminder that the Hamilton Hurricanes, the last time they were here at Citywide, trailed at halftime, but came back to win 19-16 here at Citywide. That was back on August 24th of 2019. This seems like a pretty pivotal play coming up here, Ron, for the Hurricanes. Again, on the road, down 21-0 in Beefeater's territory. A second and 10 as they're going to motion people to the left side of the gridiron. They hand this one off. Smith trying to get through a hole, but it doesn't look Isaiah Smith can go anywhere. Third down. Yeah, just an inside zone play. They did a little bit of a motion to the outside, trying to show the outside zone. Cuts it back inside, nowhere to go. Good job by the beef feeders. Looks like Jared Fernandez Brown will come out to attempt a field goal in this game. Now, I gotta ask you this. He's done place kicking as well as the punting duties, Jay. He's had multiple punts blocked. How does that affect his psyche going into this first field goal attempt of the evening? It definitely does. He's from the left hash, so he's gonna have to like compose himself. And I'll tell you though, uh, Mr. Thomas certainly made up for that penalty earlier there for the beef eaters with a big tackle on the big number 24 Smith. Well, and I also think back to Cody McRoberts. He got tagged for touching the kicker on a punt one time and then made up for it by picking up the loose change and rumbling 40 yards down the field for a touchdown. Yeah, Hamilton just took a time out because they didn't have uh, 12 men on the field. And that's going to happen uh, early in the season. Timeout that's games. both their timeouts now. So Hamilton's used both their timeouts. I think the beef eaters have used only one of theirs. 6.30 remains here before the halftime break. Is there anything you'd like to improve upon if you're the beef eaters right now, Ron? Well, you know, you, you've done a, you've, you've capitalized on special teams in this game, turning it over. You've had an interception. You've done a great job. You've capitalized on the short field. I'd like to see the beef eaters put a long drive in. Take about four or five minutes off the clock, throw in some run, throw in some pass, really reestablish the offense, which hasn't been on the field a lot in the second quarter. Again, 1999, the Windsor AKO Fratman defeated the Okanagan Sun 32-24. That's the last time an Ontario Football Conference team won the Junior Championship of Canada, Jay. Why is that so important? Well, the OSC will get to host the CJFL Championship this year, scheduled for December 4th. One of the things Gavin Lake was telling me last week was, you know, it's it's all about the, the recruiting system. They've got building systems out west. Uh, the, you know, they don't have many competing schools, and uh, that's why these teams are so dominant. It's going to take a while, but you see the makings of it with Maddox and now Gavin Lake taking us to the next level. A 27-yard attempt for the Hurricanes to break the goose egg off the board. The snap and the hold is good. The boot is up and splitting the uprights is Jared Fernandez-Brown for the field goal. Yeah, Hamilton gets on the board. 6.24 left in the half. Three. Still pressure the way, guys. Look at the pressure. I mean, the beast almost blocked out again, John. Yeah, I mean, like it's right just up to Gazzotti, but a great ball. I don't know if we get the number of the guy that makes the block here. But there's a guy that just clips Kazadi just before he launches from that spot you were talking about, John, earlier. So it seems like a little, but does it mean a lot, Ron? They finally got some points on the board. Their first points of the 2021 season, the monkeys off the back for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Yeah, it's huge because not, now you've showed, okay, now they're not undefeatable. Now we, we can show if we run the ball, if we throw the ball, we've had opportunities. Let's not forget, they had a drop ball in the end zone that could have been seven. So, and I like that play design too, where they were trying to get Keyshawn Jordan to the back of that end zone. Like you said, they had that that Hydra in the backfield of Isaiah Smith, along with Javante Stanley. And my money would have been on the ball going to one of them. Well, they took the shot to the end zone. Like you said, it just didn't come up the way they wanted it. Yeah, it was a smart play design. It was almost a smash concept. You know, you got a hook corner concept going on. See what the beef eaters, the beef eaters should need to drive now. Clark McCallum sends a plethora to the line. Looks like a handoff, though. Broken up by the Hurricanes. Great job to plug the hole by Mason Burnett, the defensive lineman here. Well, 6'5", 265. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, and we had Van Bell in a good spot for the bubble screen. You know, I'd like to see McCallum pull that and hit him uh, in space. You know, Tazzy's only touched the ball, guys, what, twice so yeah. far? So, you know, you got to get the ball in this kid's hands. McCallum again, 1,250 yards passing, 11 touchdowns on 74 completions, 135 attempts in the 2019 season. This game, he's already got well, that 82-yard pass to Spencer Foster, and I believe a 7-yard pass to Danny Bryan, who we have not seen back in this game, by the way as this one wow. is received wow. at the ankles and continuing to motor up the field past the 50, tiptoeing around the 45. Ron, Devin Smith 
getting the job done. You just got a slot motion, so you're showing a rocket motion coming from the, from the slot at the uh, boundary, from the field side to the boundary, or excuse me, from the boundary to the field. You're just getting them outnumbered. Davin Smith and another American guy who's a quarterback, but he's kind of like that Wildcat guy, and right now they're using him uh, as a receiver, and you can see the speed right there. Well, Ron, they didn't listen to you. They're not chewing up much time, but they are chewing up a lot of yards. They already find themselves at the Hurricanes 45 with 445 remaining here in the opening half. McCallum. Four weapons to the right side of the field. Three will swag there. Hamilton looking to bring some pressure. It's a handoff to Taz Vang Bell. Vang Bell breaks off of a tackle, trying to break off another one and does. Eventually sandwiched from a couple Hurricanes though at the 34 yard line. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately you got an injured Bay feeder down, number 60 for the B feeders. He's a little bit Braden banged. Bell. Braden Bell, the big offensive lineman. But yeah, we almost had a ta we almost had a Tasmanian Devil sighting on the field there, John. As you can see, this guy is so dangerous with the ball in his hands. And talk about Braden Bell right now, a little worse for wear, but again, he's one of those big bodies that Gavin Lake's looking to, well, utilize on that offensive line. Yeah, really good uh, lineman, and they're gonna have to bring in Seamus O'Connor. And uh, the reason why I'm pointing to this name is we had a kid in Camp John, and I kept calling him O'Connor, and that wasn't his right name, and because I was always thinking of Seamus, he looked just like Seamus. So uh, Seamus O'Connor will come in, and let's hope Brandon Bell is going to be okay. He looks like he's good, guys. Yeah, but he's got to come out for the two plays yeah. for the injury, yeah. so yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. Hurricanes again can well bend but not break on this drive, Ron. They just got their first points in this contest thanks to the Jared Fernandez Brown 27-yard field goal. And now down 21 to three, they already find themselves well back on their heels a bit defensively. Yeah, and again, this is really, really great. This is what you're looking for for the beef eaters is some type of answer to their score. You want to have a drive. You can come away with points, even better. But the fact that they're moving the ball, they flip the field position, this is a really, really good job. McCallum looking to go back to doing some damage. A motion from the beef eaters as there's four targets to the left side. McCallum finds his target. This one's reeled in. Wolf Sim. Well, he gets deep into the red zone down to about the seven yard line. Great play concept. You're spreading the ball wide. You're showing the motion. You're bringing over the, the wheel backer to track the back. And he's just sitting down in the simple zone concept. Great play design there. And now Hamilton's really in trouble here. Jay London in the red zone. Less than four to go in this opening half. They already have three majors. They're eager for a fourth. Yeah, and I, I really love this drive. You guys call him. You know, get the ball to, to, to your playmakers. And this Wolf Sim guy, I love him, Ron. What a what a tremendous slot this kid is. The only thing, though, is Ron wanted the slow and steady approach. I think this has taken all of 60 seconds of game clock, and they find themselves in the red zone. Are they going to cap it off here? Deep towards the end zone. A diving attempt off the fingertips and almost reeling that one in. I believe it was Marcelo De Silva. Yeah, and McCallum that time pump fakes the bubble screen to the left. And just, this is the veteran in him. Look at him. Drives the football to the right spot. Oh, man, we got to have that one. I remember Tyler Tyranny of the Se Sebastian Bulldogs or something like that. Yeah, SAB in triple overtime in three feet of snow catching that ball in a similar vicinity right here at City Park. Yeah, a kid that I had nicknamed Hollywood years ago. Really good to see him back at Banting High School Banting, this year. Yeah, watch out for the bull Watch out for the Broncos. Oh yeah. This year. oh yeah, quarterback, and they got it all. Vanier Cup winner Mackenzie Ferguson, a yes. Banting Bronco product. So here we go, McCallum, first, or I apologize, second in goal. As now this is a handoff to Van Bell. Van Bell trying to get real estate, but going in the wrong direction. Eventually will run out of real estate in front of the Hamilton bench. Right, I, I like the play design, but you're running it to the wrong back. side of the field. You can't have Tazzy Van Bell run a jet to the Lock short side of the field. He's got to he's going to make those moves. He wants to make somebody miss, but you got to do it to the wide side of the field. And again, that. remember Danny Bryan caught a pass from McCallum for the touchdown but got injured subsequently on the next drive. We haven't seen him at all. And that's a major offensive factor that, you know, Gavin Lake was relying on in this 2021 season. Hey, hold your breath if you're Beef Eaters fans. Absolutely, and you got great depth behind him, but Danny's a veteran, he's a leader. He's the heart and soul of this this club. He's been to every practice, and, and uh, you know, we just hope he's uh, okay. I'm looking in the tent. He doesn't seem to still be in the tent. Maybe I'm wrong, guys, but we'll get something on him at halftime. So remember, Stackhouse had his opening field goal attempt in the first quarter blocked. He's going to get a chance for some redemption here. This one is up, Ron. 
And it is good. So Stackhouse returns the favor from Jared Fernandez Brown. Field goal for field goal here late in the second quarter. But again, a good drive. It's an answer to what the Hamilton Hurricanes did. It's reestablishing offensive control by the Beefeaters. Really good job. It's what you wanted to do. Sustain a drive, shoot up some yards, flip the field again, get some points off of it. You're still up 21 and going into two minutes and 43 seconds left in the half. Question for you guys. I mean, we've seen the beefs. We've been fun them. We just saw Chris Marshall, the coach, a few years back. Then they got Maddox, and it's progressively gotten better. I mean, Maddox, I felt, did a great job of making it relevant again. And now you see, Gavin, like, there's something different in the air, guys. Remember the first game we called, the 1916 game? Hamilton came back. You just don't get that feeling today. Hamilton's talented. They could. But I'll tell you something. This beef team seems stacked and loaded, guys. When I go back to the pressure that Belbeck's been facing, opening Bell till now, Ron, and they did a little bit of a bit better job that last drive using, again, Javante Stanley as well as Isaiah Smith to give him some real estate. Let's see if they go back to the pattern here. It's a play action on the screen, if you will, over to the right side, reeling it in and almost a dangerous play there. Isaac McClownan. How many linemen are you allowed downfield at five yard depth? Because the lineman was basically set up five yards down back depth. We got something on the field here. I'm not sure what, what's going on over there. Maybe it's a towel or something. Yeah, Ron's wig is at the uh, 34-yard <laughs> yeah, line. This is all natural. Come on. Oh, man. <laughs> We're oh, starting? No. We're starting early. It's already about even halftime, guys. Hey, isn't it great to be back, boys? Yeah. We've got Adam Melrose, our producer, one of our extraordinary leader, and, uh, and then, of course, Johnny Urban Linus here on the mic. So a delayed handoff won't work out as the pressure coming down the pipe. A bulldog mentality once again from Jordan Fletcher. We've said his name numerous times here today. And unfortunately for the backfield of the Hamilton Hurricanes, just no real estate to manage there. It almost seems like when he wants to take over a play, he's unblockable on the field, and he's just going to take over the play. Well, I was worried, guys. When I came last week, I saw him kept getting penetration against the beats of the line. I was like, oh, my goodness, the defense looks good. But, but you know what? This guy's the real deal. Hamilton, time of the essence, if you will, in this opening half, down by 21 points, 205 remaining here, and let's say they're a little way ways from Dodge, and they're gonna have a gonna third down attempt here, here yeah. from their own side of the field. I don't know if my stomach sits risky. well with this. The pro set, Belbeck steps up in the pocket, rolls up to his left side, has a dart down the sidelines, in and out of the receiver's hands, and the attempted target, and Keyshawn Jordan. They've tried to get to Jordan an awful lot. Again, he had nine receiving touchdowns on 22 catches in 2019. It just not worked out here today, Jay. Travis Clark, good thing he dropped that because you lose you would you know, you're going to have first down down here for the Beefs. He catches that. It's like a 30-yard flipping field. It's a bit of a quicksand moment right now for the Hurricanes. Let's face it. It was 21-0. They finally got a good drive going. A 27-yard field goal through Jared Fernandez-Brown. But then boom, boom, bang. Beef Eaters offense went back the other way. Led to a Stackhouse field goal. And we just see some domination here with 145 remaining in the second quarter. The Beef Eaters could add to the 21-point lead. I understand the concept of going for it on third down there you're down three scores you're in you're in visitors to the home field i'll give you another one two punts blocked and two others pressured i don't know if they believe that they have the ability to stop the beef feeders from blocking their kick and maybe that's what's going on so 145 can't take the lethargic pace you suggested last time ron what do you do on this drive <laughs> you know what? Actually, you can because you're now you're in the under last three minutes. So the oh, the clock's, clock's going to stop. stop. Yeah, 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 you know, you got me there. Three run to the line. Four targets to the right side. Throw oh, to the right shot. side. Oh, the intended target was Connor DePotesta. But then the Hurricanes, I thought, easily were going to intercept that ball through Jake Adard. It ends up being a... Very loud, incomplete Second pass. Time. Yeah, double drop there. You know, I, I thought the Hamilton player, you can see it right there. He eye points. He does a better job of going up for the ball than the uh, receiver. The beefy receiver, I think this lost his footing a little bit, fell backwards. That should have been a pick. Yeah, Ad Adard would want that one back. But I will say this. Did the setting sun maybe play a factor here at Citywide? As it, like you said, the receiver and the defender looked like they had a hard time tracking down the pigskin. It's yeah, quite, I'm, it's, I'm, sorry, go ahead, Ron. Yeah, it's, it's quite possible, but, you know, I just... I think that's just a drop. Hamilton's had some drops tonight. 
Second and 10, McCallum goes back to the shotgun. Again, remember, he had 11 touchdowns in 2019. Already thrown two here today. This one to the left side, reeled in. Looks like it's good enough for the first down. We'll see what the officials we say, though. Number 34, LJ Dyer with the catch. On that Take last touch, on that last scoring drive from the Beef Eaters, we, we had the incomplete in the end zone. They were running that exact same play concept, and LJ Dyers was wide open at the, about the 15 yard line. He was going to walk into the end zone. Instead, we took a shot to the end zone. I like that they came back to it, recognized that, and got the first down. So, Beef Eaters Jay will want number seven, Danny Bryan, to come back into the fret, whether it's this game or a game in the future in this season. But how good does the forecast hold for the Beef Eaters, knowing that without their star running back, they seem to be firing just fine? Yeah, they're stacked, and they also have Joel Kubine, who we called a few years ago, uh, playing the H end of the fourth running back. So, they're stacked. McCallum handoff but this time the hurricanes rush in there great job by uchi onyekware number 98 in blue and number 99 as well austin henry the, the two big men there in the middle hit lj and lj had nowhere to go and lj is a physical runner onyekware literally put his body on the line so did a fellow hurricane i think is still down right now and austin garlo henry yeah, and it, yeah, that's unfortunate because he he took a shot, that kid. There was a collision that yeah. last play. 91 seconds remains before halftime. Yeah, and you guys talked about it. I mean, right now it's in the trenches. We're seeing the trenches. It, it's a it's a, it's a a battle right now. And the, 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 obviously, the beef eaters are winning. But there have been some big plays from this D-line, and uh, especially against the run game of uh, the beef eaters, we've seen them be pretty stout uh, at their point of attack. So put yourself in the position of Dave Missions. He's the defensive coordinator for these Hamilton Hurricanes, Ron. You're down by 21, 91 seconds remains, and you got your opponent in your territory. How do you make sure you don't break here? I think you blitz. I think you have to bring pressure. You can't allow them to set up. Watch for a quick pass from the beef eaters, but you got to bring pressure. You cannot allow a first down or you're in big trouble. Watching for Nick McKenzie on the bottom half of your screen in red. He was going to bunch the line. Three targets to the right side. McCallum rolling out to that right side. Oh, a dangerous pass. The intended target on the play was Wolf Sim. But to be honest with you, I think having a fair argument on the play was Drew Kosick of the Hurricanes going, well, I was interfered yeah, with. Absolutely. Watch Devin Smith come over here, guys, in motion. And really, if Clark would have just, just waited a split second, Devin Smith is wide open on the wheel. Watch this, guys. He yeah. runs a little out. And we'll see it right here. There's no one near him. Uh, I just wish he would have just hung on a little bit longer and found Devin Smith. But Hamilton did bring the pressure that time. Yeah, like so that's said. the answer. They've got a double linebacker blitz. They brought six. Beef eaters were able to pick it up, giving them enough time. Slid out, but hit your feet. You don't throw the ball very well. It's KJ Kennedy, Ron Florida, and yours truly, Johnny Urban. Happy to take you through this Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener here. Live on Beefs TV. Courtesy of Adam Melrose on YouTube. And again, this is the London Beef Eaters hosting the Hamilton Hurricanes, a rematch of the 2019 OFC semifinal. It's hard to believe 679 days ago. This one just outside of field goal range. So instead of Stackhouse going out there for a field goal attempt, he's going to have to try and grab this one off the carpet. Stackhouse turning around, looking up the field. What is he going to do here, Jay? He eventually gets hammered down and loses his bucket in the action back at his own 50. You were screaming at him to throw the ball. I think everybody in the, the as far as fans were concerned, Ron, were saying, do something. Well, he took a hit. If he throws the ball and it's incomplete, at least they get the ball back there. Now, now you know, uh, Hamilton's going to get great field position. Ball's got to get back to the line yeah, of scrimmage, though. He wasn't that far. It was 20-yard pass. Throw the football. They practiced this. No, but a fair assessment, Ron, you're saying, like, let's say he attempts to throw the ball there and it doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage, yeah. it's going to burn him anyway. Back here, yeah. yeah, it's coming back here anyway at that point. I mean, regardless, you were asking, or I asked you, what does Dave Mitchins and the defense coordinator have to do? Well, they did not break. Yeah, and that was, again, bringing the pressure on second down there, not allowing the beef eaters to convert, that was huge. If they can get some points in here, they can get back in and retake momentum in the second half. They need 52 yards, though, offside. for a touchdown. They are many yards offside. A dead play, if you will, as it'll be an incomplete pass Public between pass the hash marks. Okay, that's on the offense. That play yeah. should have been blowing dead. I don't understand why they allowed receiver. that to happen because the wide receiver the, on this side yeah, the receivers was clearly the offside. receivers go offside. It's, uh, when it's a lineman, yes, but they, I know what you're saying, Ron. I mean, 
let's just say there were too many blue <laughs> uniforms up the field before the pigskin moved players, from the line too, of scrimmage. Right? Yeah, and you never know if it was you don't. You know, we don't know for sure. Let's see what they're calling here. Oh, yes, yeah. we do. <laughs> no, we know for sure, but we don't know what for sure what the referees are calling is what I'm saying. 102 remains here before the halftime break at Citywide Sports Park. Again, this is the 2021 right, season opener the for the Ontario Football That'll Conference. Fine, week one action. Fast. Technically week two, though, of CJFL action. As I was telling you early, Ron, this is the lone OFC game here tonight. But out west, it's an all-Edmonton battle as the 0-1 Edmonton Huskies are at the 1-0 Edmonton Wildcats, a 7 p.m. Mountain Time kickoff later here tonight. Yeah, again, you know, great action. It's great to have football back. The sounds, the smells, you know, the, the passion of the game. God, it's good to be back after two years, guys. Tomorrow, there will be more OFC action on the schedule. The St. Clair Fratman will be on the road to take on the GTA Grizzlies. That's a 1 p.m. kickoff. Delbeck takes the snap, hands this one off. A dose of Isaiah Smith to the left side. <laughs> Shy of the first down, down but what are you going to do here on third down, Ron, knowing that you're on, on beef eater's side of the turf? You've got to go. You've went for it, you know, at the 35-yard line last time. You're obviously, you know, you've got a minute Same left. They, they've got to go. They've got to go for it. Look for maybe a bubble or try to get a swing or some type of screen. Get the ball to your running back. Your downfield passing really hasn't been on cue tonight. It's been the running backs and the short passing game that's helped Hamilton. By the way, the Hilltops, again, the number one team in the nation, Jay, had a scare. Only won 18-17 in week one of competition in the CGFL last week. And that was with a walk-off rouge. As pump faking and not being able to complete the pass of the intended target, Isaiah Smith is Belbeck again. And unfortunately, just a rough day at the office for Ethan Belbeck. Who let's... Face it, 2019 was a couple moons ago, but still during that season, 1,618 passing yards, 16 touchdowns, 63 yards passing percentage. I mean, a stud to say the least, but all that time off, I'm not blaming him. He's had a lot of pressure in his face. Yeah, and he looks good as an athlete. I think, like you said, the pressure has been, and it's not just, it's like four man pressures, three man pressures, sometimes five, and that's the point. He's just not getting the opportunity to set his feet. This kid can play. And they're going to have to make some adjustments at halftime, John. Maybe leave someone extra in to block. Do the beef eaters round out this clock, Ron? Are they hungry for more points with 37 clicks left on the clock? I, I think you play it safe. You know, you're up 21 points. Uh, maybe run a draw. Maybe run a swing or something like that. Try to get the ball in space. And it, or I was going to say... <laughs> Running the outside zone to Taz Van Bell. Van Bell cuts in, skips over a tackle on the 50, eventually dragged down by a quadrant of Hurricanes, including Tyrell Thieber. Is that a draw run when you run outside zone with Taz Van Bell? It, it actually is almost with him. You know? <laughs> what a cutback. Watch the cutback maneuver. Look at this right here, guys. Boom, puts his foot down, and if that guy doesn't make the play, guys, right here, he might be still running. Hurric right into, uh, where, what, St. Thomas? Hurricane's not a fan of the Canadian clock as it'll stop at 28 seconds. Now with the official's whistle, it'll click down and it looks like the beef feeders aren't necessarily in a rush. To your point, Ron, protecting the ball in their 21-point lead going into halftime. Yeah, again, it's been a dominant factor in this game, the offensive and defensive line play of the beef feeders. Do they give it to Taz Vang Bell again? No, they're going to fake it twice, and McCallum holds on to it. I don't know if I agree with that play design. They don't get a yard on the play and bring up second down. And they were trying to get that Smith guy open again, John, on an option play. You're right, I don't like that play. It didn't have be disaster, but McCallum, the veteran, holds on to the football, and, you know, like you said, John. But just getting your quarterback in that position yeah, you don't want were to, no. unnecessarily wrong. You do not want to have your quarterback accumulate extra hits. Maybe not today, but those all add up over the course of a season. Barring a penalty, which by my own calculations is about 37% of all plays we've seen in the opening half, this should be the final play of the first two quarters here at Citywide Sports Park. We'll see if the beef eaters just simply take a knee. No, oh, it looks the like... sexiest play in football. I love that play. <laughs> Instead, three are going to run to the line to the left side. The beef eaters are going to take one more shot. And there's a chance to number 85 in and out of the hands. And that could have got him hurt, to be honest with you. But 85 appears to be okay in Michael Saucier. So after 30 minutes of CJFL football from the Forest City, it is the London Beef Feeders leading the Hamilton Hurricanes by a score of 24-3. to It all started 5 minutes and 28 seconds into this game with an 82-yard Pass to Spencer Foster. Later on, there was a similar play, all thanks to, well, Jordan Wright's interceptions and blocked punts. 
That allowed Danny Bryan to get into the end zone to make it 14-0. Into the second quarter, a blocked punt eventually was returned by McRoberts to make it 21-0 B-Feeders. For the B-Feeders eventually, well, the defense would allow the goose egg to break on the board, Ron Forwarda, with the 27-yard field goal from Jared Fernandez-Brown. That was, though, reciprocated by Stackhouse, and that's where we sit, 24-3 at the halftime break. Yeah, again, the, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it has been the pressure, the pressure, the pressure by the defensive line, getting the ball into space through the playmakers, special teams. Those would be the three factors for the beef feeders, which are really winning them this game so far. Flip the script in the second half, KJ. How do the Hamilton Hurricanes make this a doozy? Well, we've seen it. We. So there's some things they've done well. I think they bring some extra protection in, you know what I'm saying, and to just allow themselves to be uh, able to, you know, withstand some of that pressure and you know, get the ball into the running back's hands. Guys, that's been the recipe here. It's been pretty good. Stick to it and and, and play action passes, guys. they got to complete them when they get those opportunities. For KJ Academy, Ron Forwarda, I am John Urban. It's the halftime here at the Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener between the Hurricanes and the Beef Feeders. We'll catch you around for second half action.
Welcome back to Citywide Sports Park here on a, well, warm and muggy August evening. It is the Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener. The London Beefeaters hosting the Hamilton Hurricanes here in week one of OFC action, but already week two of CGFL action across the beautiful Legion of Canada. Well, I wish we had a fly in the locker room. Oh, wait, we did. Ron for word, tell us about the good, bad, and the ugly that you learned from the Beefeaters at the halftime break. Well, speaking to Coach uh, Gavin Lake at the half, just real quick, uh, he's really not happy with his team's performance with the undisciplined penalties, which we kind of expected. He's really happy with the pressure that they're adding. A uh, couple player updates. Danny Bryan is fine injury-wise. Uh, they're just basically resting him. That's Expect a huge lot for beef feeder fans. Lots of rotations. The players are tired. It is hot out there. And if you're the Hamilton Hurricanes, I'd imagine not only the bus legs are coming down, uh, the freeway but then you also got to think about this heat and these temperatures and again 600 plus days of your last action jay for the hurricanes what do they got to do to try and make this a contest you know one series at a time one play at a time we'd like to welcome just the just come in with your Saint game plan Claire go back to your game plan and see if you can execute it you're, at some point if you if can't you like get back in this game you're playing for next week this is like because of practice we'll and mind. again just looking at the rushing stats stanley only two yards on three carries then they really gave the ball over to isaiah smith he had 60 yards on 70 or sorry seven carries there ron passing from balbeck five of 16 for 54 yards and one interception still looking for the first major are the baby blue sound crew known as the hamilton hurricane so now booting this one away will be Jared Fernandez Brown receiving it around the own 10 yard line back up the other way skipping past the tackle through the 30 yard line the beef eaters decent spot to start this next drive good return of about 20 yards just a straight up wedge block up the middle does a good job following this blocker finding the space exploding good gain of about 20 yards on that McCallum, 6 of 13 passing in that opening half, 155 yards and two touchdowns. And again, remember, those stats almost line up with what he did in the 2019 season, 1,250 yards passing and 11 TDs on 74 completed passes. Yeah, and again, at number 56, the man that we've been talking about, Jordan Fletcher, guys, he has... Uh, Numerous tackles. Yeah, he has uh, <laughs> uh, three, three tackles, two sacks, and eight hurries. And I got to keep a, a big shout out too to Jordan Wright, the INT on the opening play of the game on the flea flicker from the Hamilton Hurricanes, as well as blocking uh, a punt that essentially set up the Danny Bryan touchdown pass. And yeah, Cody McRoberts with a special teams touchdown and just kind of been all over the field playing Sam linebacker and specials. He's got uh, four tackles right now. So again, it's going to be going back to Javante Stanley as well as Keyshawn Jordan and Ethan Bell back. Sort of those three pillars, if you will, offensively for the Hurricanes to try and get back into this game. But then they're going to need their defense to pretty much shut out these beef feeders in the second half of action to give them a chance. It starts with this drive as McCallum throws this over to the left side. This one is caught. Open territory. Van Bell, a little slice and dice up the far sidelines. Cuts back in. Eventually, will <laughs> be smothered down. You think the whistle should have gone a little sooner there at the 43-yard line. Just a little bit of taste of the Tasmanian Devil. Just a swing pass out to the wide side of the field. Excuse me, to the short side of the field. And uh, Tazzy does the rest Brought in the open space. This is what makes him so dangerous out of the backfield, Jay. Yeah, exactly. And look at the receivers here. There's a there's a block there that's a little bit questionable, but I do in the old days it was a great block. But just the, the fact that he got his shoulder in front, I think is what saved him. <laughs> I like Blake Williams. He was the tackler for the Hurricanes. Not only was he essentially getting ran over by Taz, but was hanging on to him for dear life, saying, nah, you're not going any further, man. You already got the first down on us. The old Flintstones when you know Dino's uh, playing Fred. Yeah. So a beautiful night for football here in London, Ontario, as again the beef eaters are taking on the Hurricanes here. The Beef Eaters will be on the road for their next two games, though, taking on the Quinty Skyhawks and the St. Clair Fratmen, where the Hamilton Hurricanes will be at home, quote-unquote. It'll be actually games in the Brantford, Ontario, not in the Hammer, as they'll take on the GTA Grizzlies next week and eventually host the Quinty Skyhawks the following week after that. Yeah, and again, the Quinty Skyhawks, a new team to the uh, CGFL this year. It's great to have a team represented in the Kingston area. Yeah, and, 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 and again, you know, I think when you're going back to the Brantford thing, Brantford's a nice little place. The problem is, are they going to draw fans from Hamilton? We hope they do. Uh, but but a nice awesome. facility, and if you can get a good crowd there, John, it's loud. Remember, we did a broadcast championship game. Couldn't even hear ourselves think. 
And it was just little kids playing. Mm, that was the PA announcer. Oh, that's right. So I'm, my bad. <laughs> it will be. I just wanted to lead into that. It'll be McCallum going from the gun here on this first and 10. 13 26 remains in the third quarter of action. Hamilton appearing to throw some pressure here as there's a man stunted to the line at number 89, and Will Sim. They'll move it over to that left side where Sim had set up, but uh, it only works out for a yard or two. And you talked about adjustments on defense. Dyer. Bring, you know, take away that inside zone run game by bringing an extra man, mucking up the, the blocks, and again, they lose uh, good, a yard good, on that good play, play right? Yeah, I get good pressure, good Second stout defensive line that played by the uh, Hurricanes on that one. Pressure from the outside. I'm telling you as well, if the beef eaters are watching this, you've got the quarterback pull on that because that D end is not interested in contain. He is crashing down. The Hurricanes defense essentially has to be perfect in the second half to give their team a chance to come back on your Saturday evening. Yeah, they, they need to step up. They're, they're going to need a couple plays here. You know, where we said earlier, you're look, looking for a drive and some points. You need to capitalize on your drives, and you need stops, and you need them fast. Second and long from the 44-yard line. McCalum pressure coming down the pipe. Avoids the one tackle. Spinning around like a bottle top. Throws it in midfield. Interception, Hurricanes. Great job to read the quarterback's eyes. Jake Attard. And remember, Attard almost had an interception in the first half. He wanted that play back. Well, he got it. And watch this play, you know, great job of moving, but there's Tazzy all by himself. Just throw it away at this point, you know what I mean? You don't got to force it, but again, good play by the defender from Hamilton, and Clark did a great job. I mean, you could see him feel that pressure, and just, I've never seen an escape route like that, but, you know, just throw the ball away. He almost did a full figure eight run for Warder in the backfield, eluded the hurricane pressure, but as he mentioned, should have just thrown this one away instead of to a Tard's hands. Yeah, you know, that's that's tough, you know. He's played a really, really good game, but that's that's a flaw. You get, you, you're always looking for something to coach on. You gotta you gotta take the hit on that or just dump it out to we the We were flat. praising Jordan Wright in the first half with his INT and his block punt. Well finally a Tard has stepped it up now for the Hurricanes on their side, and they switch back to the offense, tiptoeing out of bounds around the first down marker after receiving the pass from his quarterback in Belbeck is Quincy Belanger. Yeah, Qu Quincy Belanger, right. Belanger has had a couple times First where down. he's been open downfield. He's a playmaker outside, and now you can see the kind of the adjustment Hamilton's doing. Get the ball out quick. That avoids the rush. That avoids the pressure, and it's like a long handoff. Great defense usually leads to some good offense. Jay, is that what we're going to see here? Yeah, and I like you said, how do you slow the pass rush down? What do you got to do? A little quick screen to the, to the boundary and let your receiver do some work. Bell back in the gun. Has four run to the line, two options to his right side. Looks to his left side as the pack collapses. He avoids one tackle, avoids another one. A dump pass to the same receiver, but the ball comes loose. It's laying there at midfield, and the beat feeders recover. Diving onto the ball is number 23, Mo Kadri. Yeah, and just a play that, I mean, Brett Favre, like, pitches the ball. you got to secure the football, and unfortunately, with first down to a turnover, just a... Heartbreaking to start this half for Jason Hayes and his crew. Yeah, Bellinger looked like to get a second dose of a reception here in the second half. And just as I thought the offense was starting to click, well, it buckles down yeah, under the pressure of the fumble. Good. Yeah, you know, that's an unfortunate play. It, it was a great escape route again by the quarterback from Hamilton. Buying time, big pressure from the beef feeders. Get the ball to the playmaker, but unfortunately the fumble. And we got a... Uh, Quick little injury update here for the uh, beef. Yeah, players. Dylan Thomas down at the Beef's 50-yard line. And again, just such a tough break for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Down 24-3 at halftime. Look like a great, you know, defense. Leads you to the offense. A tard with the INT. They make a quick reception to Bellinger. They look to go back to Bellinger. And whoop, the biscuit falls out right at midfield. And the beef eaters recover at the 55-yard line. A tough break for the road team. Real tough, because, I mean, again, what an effort by... I mean, you're talking about the secure quarterback's been running for his life. He's a tough kid, and, and to be able to make that throw run to the boundary and you're pitching it to the boundary with a forehand pitch, great play, but uh, unfortunate. You and I, Ron, are of that old school thinking, though, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why did we not go to see more of that tandem of Isaiah Smith and Javante Stanley like we saw at the end of that second half, or first because, half? Sorry. Well, I, I think what the Hamilton uh, Hurricanes are doing is they are understanding they've got to get the ball out wide in space to their playmakers. They've got to try to get some explosive plays to get back in this game. You're down 21 points. So after an INT and a fumble, we'll see if one of these teams can get their offense going here in the second half of action. 
It's a handoff and a couple yards gained right up the gut, but a flag on the Got play. I believe the, the bee feeders were offside. Yeah, I believe it was Wolf Sim number 89. He just left a little bit early on that. By Harrison. It's just a lack of reps in practice there, Jay, in order yeah. not getting the timing right on both sides of the ball. Yeah, it's just, it's just you know, you, you got to know your assignment and... You know, here's what happens when you get up big. Sometimes you start making these little mental mistakes, especially when you've been off for two, you know, almost two seasons. And you can see it right now. Uh, you know, just an unfortunate uh, penalty. And Ron also mentioned talking with Gavin Lake at halftime, trying to keep the rotation fresh. I'm sure that's going for Jay Hayes and the Hurricane side too, with the heat being a bit of a factor. And again, the long, long, long layoff that both these two teams have had to face since their last taste of OFC action. And as I mentioned, the last time these two teams played each other, oh, a mere 679 days ago. <laughs> yeah, that's again, a long time. And, and that's, we're seeing the lack of reps, the lack of hitting. It was some sloppy play. You've seen some drop balls in this game that I don't think you see later on in the season. First and 10 turns into first and 20 for the B feeders as McCallum takes the snap, looks to hand this one off to the left side, going up the field, making his way to the sidelines as LJ Dyer and... Jay, maybe that's a case of just going a little too much east-west and not yeah, enough north-south. You watch LJ, just a little, little more patience, and maybe he cuts it back, gets four or five, you know, but instead he loses yards trying to you know, get outside. There it is. Look at that. Look at that crease right there, Ron, like you call it. That would have been a nice little four or five-yard game. Who knows? Maybe he breaks it, but instead takes it outside, and, uh, you know, LJ is a great inside runner, and I think what we'll see is his development as he goes through the beef eaters as an outside runner. He's going to be pretty scary. Hurricanes defense seems to be flexing a little bit here early in the second half. I don't want to jinx them, but it seems to be a strong point where Coach Hayes can build off of. Yeah, again, minus, minus the uh, special team miscues, this Hamilton defense has actually played really, really solid today. A sturgeon of targets to the right side for McCalum. He's going to go right up the middle, off the receiver's hands. And maybe, Jay, that was a case of even him thinking about going up the field before he had the ball. That was Luka Zofko. Yeah, and uh, just, you know, a good route. Catch the football, like you said, John. He's thinking, I'm going to the end zone. Secure the football and, uh, you know, and then, then make your move up the field. That's also, uh, not to use the term suicide pass, but that is a dangerous area between the hash marks to set your receiver up because you don't know if he's going to get pinballed from the left or the right side. Well, as a receiver, when you're going in there, you're, you probably hear the footsteps a little bit, but you got to be tough in there. You're going to set your feet, catch the ball, secure the ball, get the first down. You know, the beef eaters would have had something now. you got to punt. The last one, remember, the last time the beef eaters punted, the snap was rolled back. Yeah, and Stackhouse struggled to just, well, gobble up the play for a loss of about 15 yards. This time he is going to get the punt away. No problems on this one. It takes a two bounce and eventually picked up by number 34 of the Hurricanes. Back the other way is Javante Stanley, just in front of his own bench, pushed down at the 40-yard line. You know, I hate to jinx it, but after, you know, five minutes of five minutes and 25 seconds in the fourth quarter, or the third, third quarter, second half here. You're jinxing yourself. The, <laughs> the tempers have seemed to settled. They seem to be settling into football. You know, the emotions of the first half seems to be over. And now you're starting to see better cooler heads can play off. And to Ron's point, how much the halftime break play a factor in that to allow Coach Hayes for the Hurricanes and Coach Lake for the Beefeaters to go, listen up, guys. I mean, I'm happy that you're happy we're back on the field, but we got to do this the right way. 100%. And you can see great coaching as it translates right here. Uh, early here in the, in the third. Four run to the line for Bell back. Eventually going to be forced up out of the pocket. Throws it down the field. This one is caught. Reeled in by Josh Kulo. Yeah, the six foot, 180 pound receiver. And he got pushed from behind, Ron. I thought it would be pass interference on the uh, beef hitters, but he still was able to catch the football. That's a big offensive play for the Hurricanes here in the third quarter of play. Just a spacer route. Very little pressure that time from the beef hitters applied up front as we do see a beef feeder down behind the play. But again, little little no. pressure there. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're into that zone coverage in the back end. It's just a sit down route. You, all you're doing as a receiver on that skinny is trying to find the space in between the defenders, giving yourself a court, giving your quarterback a nice target to throw the ball to. B feeder has uh, been down at the 35 yard line, Jay. It looks like it might be mid or upper body. I hope it's not number eight, guys. I'm looking, trying to find a number for you. And uh, so looks to be in a little pain. An little injury pain. pause here, Ron, with 9.06 remaining in the third quarter clock. 
Again, only 200 spectators allowed to come into the vicinity here at Citywide like Sports Park. It does seem like we more, but I mentioned this before. Uh, I'm noticing a lot of, uh, I guess they're not Joe official Rizzotti. attendees yeah. because they're on the Rizzotti. outside of the fence, but the and great the thing about chain link fencing, Ron, is you still got to watch the action all the same. You know, when I was walking up and down the sidelines at the halftime, I will say this. This place is packed. This place is uh, absolutely 52, packed. Two, uh, 60. You want to talk about social distancing? That's How about the way people parked in the parking lot? Down. Social distancing about every three and a half spaces, yeah. so <laughs> so that we only twenty cars could get in to a fifty car lot. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Welcome that's to citywide parking lot. Yeah. Well, I just it, it, where social distancing's been pushed down our throat the last two years. It looks like we physically have done that with our vehicles here today. I believe it was FYI. Yeah, I was going to say I thought it was Dylan Thompson number ninety. That's what I thought again. Yeah. So once again, after the great reception by Josh Colo, it will be the Hurricanes going back to work here. They stutter at the line. Did they get the beefs to jump on? Well, they did. I, I think what you're going to have is because it's, it's it was uh, on the offense, it's blowing dead. And going back to my point, 200 spectators allowed within Citywide. I would say, to your point, maybe an extra 100 around the fence line, checking in the action from around the vicinity. There's, yeah. And hundreds, if not thousands, tuned in all <laughs> around the world on our YouTube channel. So we appreciate those tuning us in on your Saturday evening for this Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener live on Beast TV. Don't forget to hit the like button and hit subscribe for future OFC and CJFL action. Gotta love the ability that uh, we have here with the great cameraman, our producer uh, Adam Merrills and Alex up high getting these great shots for you, John. Man, it's it's just, I, mean, I, I sometimes I find myself just watching the monitor because the shots are so good. And once again, a battle going down at field level right now. It'll be a first and 15 now for the Hurricanes. They once again seem to stymie to get the beef eaters to jump. They wouldn't do it though. Belbeck throws this ball deep. Intercepted by the beef eaters. There's a flag thrown immediately on the play. Jarrett Hicks came away with the pigskin. What do you see here, Ron? I think you're going to have pass interference against him. I think that he, uh, he jammed them a little bit by too Jared deep downfield. As we've just lost our monitor, unfortunately. The play. Uh, yeah, so. But Jared Hicks essentially had the INT in his hands, but you're saying maybe a little tomfoolery before the ball got there yeah, allowed I, that to take place. I, I believe so, but you also could have had a holding call on the Jackson inside here against the Hurricanes as well, which was not called. I was really surprised with that. Uh, number 64 had a pretty good hold of the, D, of, the, uh, D, of the beef eater defender. And Jacob Mandel, guys, was the guy that actually pulled the receiver and the pick came from 34 like you said and so, I remember uh, you know I keep repeating that 200 people came down I would say at least a hundred of those made the travel all the way down yeah, from the hammer to support easy. their team yeah. here and that could be huge especially in this second half contest the Hamilton Hurricanes starting to get their footing a little bit offensively and the defense is holding serve as they're down by 21 points heading into halftime and still with 813 left here in the third quarter it's a handoff trying to get out of the backfield wow. but he can't I mean, just limiting the damage is Mo Kadri on the attempted carry from Isaiah Smith. Again, just the inside zone play, pressure, pressure, pressure was the story of the first half. But again, the, I mean, Hamilton's done a good job of moving the ball in this in the second quarter and beyond. Penetration, though, Ron, implies that there is friction between getting from A to B. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of friction some of these times when a McRoberts or a Kadri gets through those gaps. I, they're just they're sending more guys than they can block is basically what it's coming down to and they're firing the gap so fast this defensive line for the beef eaters has really been outstanding the first half an hour of football featured 27 points between these two teams as this one is off the ground picking it up and saving the play at least for now is Keyshawn Jordan and I feel like I jinxed them they were starting to click a little bit in these last two plays I don't know it's kind of been what they've done they've been able to move the ball from the 35 to the 35 John and that's where it seems where problems happen uh, number 18, Dylan Clark, uh, had the wherewithal to make that uh, tackle. And some talking between the plays. I'm looking at Marcus Jones kind of get a little bit of a chitter-chat battle with Jordan Wright. And I don't know if Jordan Wright's the kind of guy you want to get on his wrong side. You know, he only has an INT and a blocked punt already in this game for the beef eater. Yeah, you know, he, he's been a definite playmaker. Going back to that last play, little jet sweep action. I'm telling you, if that handoff is clean, he's got some real estate out there, Do you too. like this decision here? Third and a mile, and it looks like the Hurricanes are going to go for it he's with Belbeck in the shotgun. Two options to his right side, three to his left. 
He looks to that left side. He is sacked down at the 50-yard line. Coming back with a vengeance is number 56, Jordan Fletcher. That's number three, three sacks, nine hurries. Uh, this man's yeah. having himself a day. And uh, Adam Barrows is smiling because guess what? That was a defensive play. And guess what? Another flag on the play at the very end of the play is again as the two squads separated some chitter chatter. It was the talk back from Hamilton that time. I believe it was number 11 who definitely turned around. He was having words with the beef eater secondary Chirping earlier on the play. The call. Where what you had said earlier, why do you go for it at that point, John? We're Shot six minutes and 30 seconds left in the third quarter. I just First feel like they could still play a positioning the battle there, Ron, and then possibly win it. Yeah. You've had two punts blocked. True. You've had two punts hurried. You've had your kicker rushed and hit on another one. Yeah, special teams has been a factor because, let's yeah. face it, Stackhouse has had a field goal blocked, but both kickers have made a field goal in this game. The punting, though is the real difference between those two blocks you were referring yeah. to by the beef eater special teams two options to the right side throwing it to that right side it's caught a game of maybe four yards a nice tackle by eric hicks a little bit of a swag after that tackle. Yeah. yeah again you know hicks uh, was one of those players that came in midway through the first quarter started getting more and more reps he's had himself a really solid game here tonight when he tackled the silva he almost like lifted him about two yards back before smashing him out of bounds yeah really good job wrapping again we talked about yards after your act yards after contact or yak there's been very little of that yeah, on both sides of the of the teams today that's a very astute point there Ron. it's true usually we see guys breaking off we have seen taz van bell the odd time do that but outside of those things pretty much when you get hit you're going down yeah lots of motion from the beef feeders here Ooh, i thought they were step off side so the official agrees with me so even though this ball is caught at midfield it appears to be a nice play as the ball is eventually loose a lot of theatrics out of the spencer foster catch but it's all coming back anyway yeah, yeah he was leaning there guys watch here i'm sorry ron as he motions in see him lean right there yarder. good call by the ref and he called it right away john just like you did 518 remains here in the third quarter of play it still seems like such a pivotal quarter right now between these two teams. As I mentioned, it was 24-3 at the halftime break. We've seen no score Looks here like in this third quarter, despite seeing two touchdowns in the first quarter of play and two field goals and a punt return TD in the second queue. Yeah, and you know, one thing, guys, uh, as we're watching the players out here, is there any guys that you're seeing, like, you know, there's two ways to the CFL. It's the OUA or, you know, U Sports. It's also junior football, and we see a lot Back of guys do that. Five. I'm starting to see some guys that I think are next-level players, guys. Spencer it's, Foster being one of them. And for a guy like Taz Vang Bell on the Bee Feeders, he actually signed with the Windsor Lancers last year. COVID, no season, and we see him back here with the Bee Feeders after a stint in 2019. Yeah, and, and, and Taz, you know, a great young man, and like you said, John, uh, you know... Finding that path. Yeah, finding the path. McCallum back at the hell now for the beef feeders. Pressure coming here from the blue jerseys and the canes. Can he escape it? He does. Spins down to the 46 yard line and managed to get a couple yards on the play. Danny McManus, isn't that what this guy reminds you of? Yeah. He's exactly what he is. Danny McManus out of uh, Florida State and the Hamilton Ticats. Just a good, wily veteran. I mean, he's not supposed to do this, right, Ron? Well, he did it. This is a smart play. You know, you're understanding where the pressure's coming from. Then all of a sudden, you step up. You've got one guy to beat. He got 10 yards on that play. You're going to turn around, punt the ball. You're playing the field position game if you're the beat feeders. You don't mind this at all. You're making Hamilton go 90 yards, 100 yards on a drive. Can you sustain that with the defensive pressure that they've been putting on? Gavin Lake is saying, no, sir, you cannot. Speaking of pressure, this is the same vicinity Stackhouse had problems with in his last punt, but this time he gets a fair snap and gets the pigskin away with little issue. Down to about the 20-yard line, hustling back up the field now for the Hurricanes is Javante Stanley, spreading it over to the right side, getting up past his own bench to the 40. That's a return of about, oh, we'll say 19 yards for Smith. And that's the first time I've seen a Hamilton player break a tackle. The beef feeders were down there. I believe it was Ethan Reed, the uh, special teamer. And I, I beg my pardon, it's Stanley, not Smith. I, it seems like anytime one of them's touching the ball, I'm saying the other one's name. Yeah, yeah. but again, good job. He, he We've did. been off for two years too, guys. <laughs> He's avoided the initial contact, got to the edge, the wide side of the field. That was the time the Hamilton special teams won that little battle. 
see if they can carry that momentum forward. Again, there was CJFL preseason power rankings. The St. Clair Fratmen came in as the highest OFC team on that ranking at number six. Obviously, the defending champs, Saskatoon Hilltops, are at number one. Beef Eaters sit at number eight, and the Hurricanes sit at number ten. We'll see how that changes after tonight. Belbeck with the pump fake, eventually trying to find a target to the near side, just not enough muscle on it. It almost goes back to that pump fake. Well, almost like that took the gas out of the rocket and not being able to hit Luca Jones as a result. Well, what you had is you had pressure from the inside, but you had a smart play by the defensive end of the beef eaters who stayed home, did not get too far upfield, took away that running lane from the quarterback, and then he had to throw the ball away. Smart defense there. This is a Hurricanes program that won back-to-back -back OFC championships back in 2010 and 2011. In fact, KJ, five straight championship OFC appearances between 2010 and 2014 for the Hurricanes, who also won the championship in 2018, going a perfect 8-0. Yeah, the Hurricanes are a storied program, and, and just, uh, I mean, you can see they can throw the football. They just got to put this together. One thing I will tell you guys, the Beefs have practiced a little bit longer than they have. Um, I think it's a two weeks difference, and you can see it here in this game. Quincy Belenger has just definitely been the number one go-to right now for Bellback when he's stuck in the pocket there, and it reaches a positive result here as it's a first down for the Hurricanes. Yeah, really good job on that. Spencer Foster, the defensive back on that play, he's going to wrap that up. He's trying to go for the hit, trying to hit the hit stick on that last one. Wrap up, secure the tackle on that. I'm not sure if Stackhouse is out, guys. 81 Leo Centino uh, actually was the punter the last time. Just want to let you know that, John. Let's uh, check that if Stackhouse is out. Yeah, and remember, too, in the opening half of action when he did get stuck at midfield trying to boot yep. the ball away, his hand, helmet came off when he took the hit wrong. Oh, wow. So more penalties, more yards, and more palms in the air for you, Ron. Yeah, I was trying to figure out why the sticks were moving, and I missed the fact that there was a flag down. Another objectionable conduct call, Jay. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just, it's getting out of I'll tell you, they'll be running next practice, I promise. <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> Three minutes remains here in the third quarter of action. As it's a delayed handoff, now trying to get up the gut is Isaiah Smith. Smith eventually met by a couple beef eaters, but look at this. Pile of humanity yeah. trying to shove each other in different directions. Derrick Henry. <laughs> I mean, this guy is a low, guys. Forward. Check his legs out. I mean, just tree trunks. And uh, great effort. And look at that old line with the surge. Like you said, John, right now, we talked about in the, in the first half, the Beefs were getting the little, winning the little battles. Right now, it seems like Hamilton's winning the little battles. And, Ron, I mentioned this, though, after the, well, midpoint of the second quarter when it was 21 0 Beef Eaters oh. after the punt return oh. touchdown from Cody McRoberts. <laughs> You know, it was a pivotal point for the Hurricanes to get some points on the board. They eventually did so with a 27-yard field goal from Jared Fernandez-Brown. Unfortunately, Stackhouse did reciprocate that with a field goal of his own to improve to the 21-point deferential. How imperative is it for them to get some points on this drive, given the stance where we are in this game? You, you need to score. It's basically it. That you, you need to start counting your drives and getting points wherever you can, whether it be a field goal or whether it be a touchdown. You need to get back in this game. You're under two minutes left in the third quarter. The clock is ticking. You've got a really, really good drive, and you've got to capitalize on this. With an empty backfield, he had three weapons to his left side. Went, though, to a familiar target in Quincy Bellinger to the right side. Unfortunately, bounce pass incomplete. Yeah, and just in case he did catch it, your man, number 22, Jordan Wright, right in on the coverage time. So time is of the essence for the visiting Hamilton Hurricanes. Down by 21 points, 143 to go here in the third quarter. Three run to the line. Belbeck looks to his right side again, fires it. Is that Bellinger again? It is, catching it in front of the beef eaters bench. He might have enough to move the chains. Belbeck I think he does. Uh, this is a good, just a little sit down route. All they're doing is just run zone, uh, get run zone get concepts. Rid get rid of the football, not allow the pressure to come at you. Good for, and first down. 12 yards, you know, it, I hate to say it, but they've been running the same pattern a couple times in a row. Run until you stop it. Yeah, have they finally found the exit plan for the quarterback in Balbeck, who's, let's face it, just faced so much pressure in this game, and All now right, he seems to be down. finding Quincy Bellinger on that out scene. You yeah, get, and again, uh, John, you called it. Get rid of the, how do you change the, the pace in this game? You know, draws, yes screens, no? run the football. And yeah. right now, like you've seen, this quick game is just really working. They're getting rid of the football, negating that pass rush from the beat. 
We mentioned this before the game even began. Hydration has to be a factor. It's a hot and muggy one. It was 30 degrees at kickoff at 5 p.m. local time. Feeling more like 38 with the Humidex. We've actually had slight mists of rain throughout this game, believe it or not, despite mainly sunny skies throughout this contest, Rob. Yeah, you know, and, and again, here's the other thing to can th to, for us to think of. We're in a tent here, you know, we're, we're covered. The sun is pointing directly at the benches, which makes it even hotter. That side of the field is about five degrees warmer than this side of the field. We're starting to get some little bits of shade there. They're not going to be for another half an hour. Also, the turf tends to heat up here at Citywide, I've noticed, KJ, especially over the long course of the day with the sun beating down on it. Doesn't that sound feel too comfortable when you're constantly on your feet? No, no, it doesn't. And we've been out here, John, you've been out, you've played baseball at this time. And when it's hot, you know it's a difficult, it's a grind. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, it's always warmer here or colder, depending on the season. Especially for the Hurricanes trying to catch a ball to the far sidelines right yeah. now. And for the Beef Eaters trying to defend a ball to the near sidelines. You think you're battling the sun as well. A slice and dice to the right side now trying to make his way back up the middle as Isaiah Smith. He'll get a couple of yards here, Ron. Shy of the first down, but a second and short coming up. Again, really positive run. Shows the outside zone. Great cut back, back inside. I'd say he got a gain of about seven yards on that play. Really good, tough run. Guys, it's only 24-3. Fourth quarter, 15 minutes. See, Jeff, it's a longer game, if you haven't noticed, fans. I mean, normally, we're in and out of here in two hours. It's going to be close to three or maybe more. Well, 15-minute quarter is going back to your point, KJ. There's less than 20 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Maybe they're not going to get the touchdown here, Ron, but let's say Hamilton starts off the fourth cue with a major, which would be their first of the 2021 season. How big would that be to give a crescendo you to this game? You need to capitalize and get points. The Beef Eaters defense, I'm telling you right now, is absolutely gassed. Ethan Belbeck as the buzzer goes. There's flags on the play. They're going to halt this one down. Now, are they going to say it's offside Hamilton? Yeah. I think this is in a burden. Too much time. Or too much time, maybe, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see what they call her, John. I, I wonder if the buzzer, you know, you're thinking, oh, that's it, it's over, I don't know. We'll see what the call is. Yeah, the old citywide buzzer. Yeah, the citywide buzzer. Well, it's better than the old cowbell that was here about 25 years ago. <laughs> So once again, I want to thank everybody joining us on YouTube here on Beefs TV for the Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener as the Beef Eaters are hosting the Hamilton Hurricanes. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for future OFC and CJFL football contests. And a little word from a bird on the street tells me that high school football is also coming back to the scenes here in the Forest City at least. That's the plan. We're hoping uh, September 2nd. Uh, right now, we it seems like it's a go. Everyone's kind of getting prepared. You're seeing all the kids excited. We finished our junior Mustangs camp. And I'll tell you, uh, the smiles on kids' faces as they know high school's about uh, to get going. Not they a hope it goes. Not a uniform thought felt across the province, though, as no. places like Essex will not have football played for yeah, their high school so kids. So hard for those kids. And a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of uh, stuff like certification and stuff that, you know, with COVID, some people didn't, weren't, uh, didn't have the opportunity to do because of the numbers being the way they were. Belbeck. Going to be flushed out of the pocket. A sea of red surrounds him. He won't go down, but he'll lose yardage in this process. He'll bring up a second and long run. Guess who? Yeah, Thompson, yeah. second sack Locked of the game. And I'll tell you, I think Adam Merrill's might be coached with uh, Gavin Laker like he did a few years ago. He's just enjoying us. He's fist pumping. I love our producer. He's got a lot of energy after a long day, John. Was interesting too. That was technically the last play of the third quarter. They ran it with zero clock on the board after the delayed penalty from the previous. Uh, play so that means we're entering the fourth quarter of play no points put on the board does that favor the beef eaters Ron I mean there are one more quarter closer to the victory well yeah you're one more clo quarter closer your defense has been on the field the majority of the third quarter the beef eaters I believe need to put a drive together even just to give their defense a rest do you take that as a mini victory though if you're the Hurricanes defense knowing they gave up 14 points in the opening quarter an additional 10 points there in the second quarter they shut out the beef eaters in the third yeah and they played well like you said all game it's these you know block punts and, and things that have big plays that have got the beefs their their scores but really outside of that this 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 defense has played pretty darn good. But so offense, very much a victory. Offense needs to be something, Ron, in order for you to win a game. They've only got three points on the board thanks to the 27-yard field goal in the second quarter yeah, from Jared Fernandez-Brown. You've got to capitalize on this. It's second down, and I'd say about 25 here. 
Three run to the line. Three targets to the left side. Belbeck steps up out of the pocket. Just smothered from behind, though. Another sack by the beef eaters. I mean, let's eat. That's the motto of the team, and certainly eating today is Jordan Fletcher. It's been an all-you-can-eat buffet by Fletcher today. I believe that's number five for him. Yeah, that's when the manager starts going up to you and going, hey, sir, can you please leave the restaurant? And not just five guys, five with ten hurries. Like, it's just, I mean, wow, what a, what a debut. But it's not just him, guys. It's that, like you said, it's a team. I mean, obviously it is him making those plays that quick, but just the, 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 the wherewithal of the beef eaters, defenders, to be in the right place at the right time every single play it seems. Again though, the Beef Eaters last game, a 50 point loss to the defending national champion, Saskatoon Hilltop. Seeing what we see here today though in 2021, uh, do the Hilltops have something to match with here in the OFC? Well, I, I mean, it's hard to tell. I mean, that's a pretty good <laughs> team out there, but uh, hey, it's, it's a step and that, that's, it's a good step. So this will be punted away and finally being able to get one off clean was Fernandez Brown. That's got to be feeling good for him considering he's had a plethora of red uniforms come after him in this game. McKenzie on the return. So Nick McKenzie on the return and some extra theatrics after the play there. Jake. Yeah, yeah, Jacob Mandel, just not necessary. Let's watch it here. You know, you get a good block there, 26 doing a good you know there and then just you don't see it it's out of the screen but just drives the guy out of bounds and plants him on his side again no call but man it's been a little chippy here today again run the lone ofc competition here tonight but tomorrow the st Clair fratman will be on the road to take on the gta grizzlies with a 1 p.m kickoff there is cjfl action tonight an all edmonton affair the 0-1 huskies take on the 1-0 wildcats with a 7 p.m mountain time kickoff later on tonight. Yeah, and again, the Edmonton teams are very, very solid. They're always well coached. Well, the Huskies almost pulled up the upset in week one of CGFL action over the Hilltops, just losing 18-17 on a walk-off rouge. This one will be out of bounds, the intended target for the beef beaters being Spencer Foster. Yeah, Spencer Foster, a little bit over his head there, and again, uh, we, we've Going got into the setting sun, too, going back to the last point and not being able to see the ball. Yeah, and it's hard to track it. You get a little bit of win. Mr. Dalberg on the sidelines yeah, eats the ball. So once again, we Weird talked about John. I found it's like, like, like there was no it seemed like the receiver wasn't the right spot. The Hurricanes have had sprouts of offense in this game, but you guys mentioned it too. It seems to be happening between the 35s. They can't get the job done getting deeper into the red zone. What do they have to do to break through that ceiling? Well, we'll find out if they can get their defense to hold the beef eaters again like they've done all second half. This one is deep behind the receiver. It's caught. No, they're going to say the ball came loose at the last second. Devon Smith looks like he had the reception. In fact, if I'm the Hurricanes, I'm going, well, he received it, and then he fumbled it. The officials say, no, 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 incomplete pass. That was a catch. I mean, he gets two feet down. He's making a football move. I don't know. Look like at a catch to me. Was he? Oh, yeah, it's on yeah, the I, I, I But think this guy here made the call from the Cesar view, not the other view. The other guy didn't, you know, that's all I'm saying. Well, I, check it out here on the replay, Ron. McCallum taking his shot deep. The receiver has it in Devon Smith. He's down on the ground. The ball comes loose. I, I don't think he really ever secures the ball, you know. To, to, Did he I, make a football play after catching it? I, no. I, I don't believe he does. That's my... Yeah uneducated opinion on the uh, on the matter. Well, who knows, right? Well, they They're there. They see it better than us. Do you like them taking the shot when they did there? I do, uh, John. I just think that the offense has gone stagnant. Like we got to run the football as well. Like, Beefs, you're up by 21. Let's run the football. And just trying to check who's back there right now. I believe that's Leo Centino. Yeah. So Centino is actually punting this one away. He's taking a skipper off the carpet. He will get it off cleanly. It's a beautiful one all the way down to the 47-yard line. Coming back the other way for the Hurricanes is Javante Stanley. Maybe two or three yards gained on the return. And again, just a coffin corner punt. When you're punting the ball in your own end, you want to kick it to the short side of the field. Joel Klubon again with the tackle there. Really good job of special teams smart understanding the, the position of the field. So again, we saw Stackhouse take a mean lick in the opening half of play, but as Gavin Lake told our own Ron Forward at halftime, they are switching up the personnel throughout this game, so it could be a little bit of A, could be a little bit of B. We'll have to see what it is, though, Jay. With 12.55 yeah. remaining in this game, though, the Hurricanes, again, not trying to 
spin that broken record. They need to get the offense going. This is a quarterback in Ethan Bellback that threw 16 touchdowns, over 1,600 yards in 2019. He struggled at halftime in this contest, failing to have a touchdown. He was three of 16, in fact, for 57 yards after 30 minutes of play. Yeah, and a lot of that had to do with that, that pressure from the front four of the Beefs. Now he's got two in the backfield for him and two running the line. Two targets to the right side. It's a play action. Throwing it deep. The pass is just a little bit behind the defender. Incomplete. In fact, having a chance at the interception was Travis Clark. Travis Clark has actually done a great job. High pointing the ball. That way he's got a great position. They haven't had a lot of success to the wide side of the field. Hamilton hasn't. Where they've had their successes on the short side of the field. But that's a tough, tough defensive play. Does a good job. You can see it right here. DB high points that ball. That's exactly what you want, want to do. Despite Jared Fernandez Brown being your only points on the board with his 27 yard field goal, is it safe to say down by 21 with only 12 minutes left in this game? It's touchdown or bust on this drive. It absolutely is. And, you know, let's get that ball to Isaiah Smith some way, somehow. I'm surprised they haven't tried to go to Quincy Bellinger, too, because we saw him targeted an awful lot on the previous drive. This time, out of the backfield, it's Isaac, Isaac McClownan. Yeah, again, switching, McClownan, it, switching it up. I think you're seeing just the heat and the amount of reps that these guys have had. you got to switch it up because 33 and 34 were both out of the game on that particular play. Yeah, and that goes back to the point. Are the Hurricanes also, I wouldn't want to say conceding, but also, again, no. this is almost the first game in 670-plus days are on. They want to see yeah. what some other personnel can bring to the table. No, I, I believe at this point it's just it's exhaustion with most of these players. Uh, these guys are just drenched. They're spent. But you're right. They haven't played football in a year and 10 months, a year and 11 months for some of these guys. Matthew Smith appears to be banged up down at the 35-yard line for the beef eaters. My question for you guys is this. I mean, you throw the ball deep on first down. Perfect and you run an inside zone on second, and it's like, I get it, you're trying to catch them off guard maybe because they've been in that three-man front on second and long, but you know what, uh, just interesting play calling. That's and all I'm and what do you call here with third and eight? Well, you gotta th I mean, you got to throw it, and then you're not going to have your two backs in, so let you need a receiver to make a play, somebody to get open. And Ball's going to 13 here. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you know it, I'm sure the beef eaters know it too, <laughs> yeah, and we'll see how that plays out in the next play. At 13 has had a, a good ball game, and... Uh, that is uh, uh, his name, Quincy uh, Belanger. <laughs> and again, a reminder that last week in that 1817 walk off victory, Ella the Rouge for the Hilltops over the Edmonton Huskies, there was some history made in the CJFL. Emma Ray Dale became the first female player to suit up in a CJFL game, making the Saskatoon Hilltops roster and road game roster as the linebacker to start in that contest. Wow. Let me ask you a question. How good are the Huskies then? <laughs> Just come within a point of the Hilltops after we saw them. I mean, we know they're... Almost pulled up the upset. That's right. But again, that long layover, Ron, might have... Uh, maybe we haven't seen the best of the Hilltops yet. <laughs> uh, it, you know what? It'll be tough to say. I'll be interested to see some of those games. When Belbeck having to throw this ball. Oh. Incomplete pass. Now the intended target, believe it or not. Quincy Bellinger. There's a flag on the play. If this is against the Beef Eaters, it's going to give the Hurricanes another shot here on this drive. He absolutely got. So he absolutely got there game. early. I, and that's the second time, right? We've yep. seen. You know, again, the the rust and uh, again, Belanger with a nice little route there, and you call it run. Belanger gets the football. But you mentioned it a couple plays ago when the Beef Eaters had their that's offense onto the field. That is Jay. Beaters. Stagnant. This whole second half doesn't seem to have the quite the fluidity that we saw in the opening quarter where they had an 82-yard pass to Spencer Foster and about a 7-yard hookup to Danny Bryan. And, and again, ever since midway through the, the second quarter for me, Hamilton's really kind of held their own defensively. Beef Feeders offense hasn't really done much. They've capitalized on an interception. They've capitalized on a block punt. They've played the short field very, very well and taken advantage of it. About 7.30 local time. The grandstand lights have been turned on here at Citywide with the sun setting to the western sky. They're going to hand this one off. Again, Isaac McClannan. So we're seeing more McClannan after also seeing nothing but Isaiah Smith and Javante Stanley to start this game from the rushing attack. And yeah. here comes Smith now, guys, and he looks uh, to be good. I think he's coming in there. They're calling a play here. For the bring up second down in about uh, down. six, John. Yeah, and you're right. Isaiah Smith is coming on for the previous mentioned Isaac McClannan. Well, that's Hicks, 24. So 
Uh, no, Isaiah on. Smith is uh, 24. Sorry, wrong roster. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We've been hey, away for 600 and whatever Yeah, days. like, come on. Actually, we've been doing some Madden stuff, but we don't want to get Ron on the Madden. Uh, what was it, the kick Don't, don't ice the kicker. Don't yeah, the that, kicker, that's yeah. Not, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> As uh, <laughs> Belbeck fakes the handoff. Going to take a shot to the end zone. Has a man down there. Off the fingertips. And, oh, man, it looked like Quinn Robertson was going to finally get the major on the board for the Hurricanes, but it is all for naught. That is three drop passes in the end zone yes. for the Hamilton yes. Hurricanes. Yeah, I think about that Keyshawn Jordan one in the second quarter was a key one, too, where that yeah. really could have changed the dynamic of this game. Yeah, and then we had one in the third quarter as well. And then there's – so right there – that's mid-season versus early season. This could be, you know, it's a 21-point game right now. This is much closer than a 21-point game. Yeah, it is. You're and right. Much, much like the CFL, no preseason to lean upon, no way to kick the rust off. You're essentially doing it here yeah. in the Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener. Thanks for joining us on YouTube all around the world. Don't forget to give us a like and hit the subscribe button. You'll get a lot more football action as well as be known about future CJFL and OFC games. Bellback once again firing it towards the end zone once again off of the receiver's fingertips and a light flag thrown here as again Isaiah Smith had a chance got hit at the end of the play and an orange flag is thrown as a result. That's four drop passes in the end zone today. Yeah, and That's again, guess who brought the pressure? Right on the play. Yeah, I'll just uh, just take a while, guess. But the penalty can't be on clipping Smith after the play, can it? It'd be a rough play, but the play was still was that third down? Or still that second? was third down. Yeah, so it still should be turnover. You're right, John, because it happened after the play. I mean, I, I don't know. But then again, I've been a part of some interesting calls in my day, <laughs> so I'm not sure. Well, the Hurricanes would love another life here, Ron. They already got a one chance earlier on this drive. They'd like another one. I don't know if they're a cat, but they're running out of lives in this fourth yeah. quarter of play. You know, but again, you know, how how long is the offense for the Bee Feeders? I'm just going to state it. Unnecessary roughness, Bee Feeders. So that's going to be an automatic 15 yards, and it's, it's a not first, first down. down. After the series, it's a dead ball foul. No, because it's 15 yards. Because it's unnecessary roughness, they do get the uh, down. They get the down over. They, if they it do. happened on the and, play. And, and let's just go back play, to the yeah. actual contact. Is that vicious enough to warrant? Well, here's here's the replay right there. Like no, nah, it is a late hit. It is a late hit. I mean, not the only thing. The maybe that's what they're calling. Us. Yeah, I mean, maybe. they got to protect the, first the players right too. Was it a twenty? It's a twenty-five yard. So you're so right. That's, that's why yeah, it's the first that's down. That's why. Because you're right, Johnny. You with great the shoulder into the head. That was a shot to the head. Hurricanes, the deepest they've been all Saturday into Beef Eaters territory, trying to capitalize on this drive. It's Ethan Belbeck throwing it towards the end zone. Has a man open. Uh, touch down Hurricanes. Keyshawn Jordan finally has the road team on the board with a major. Well, I, I, I think it's blown coverage here because they're kind of looking around at each other. And there's two blue jerseys and only oh, one red one. What a route. Watch this route. Guy. Yeah, that, this guy this sticks, route, his, yeah, he sticks his foot in the what ground and explodes route. to the corner. Well, you mentioned it. Four drop potential touchdown passes for Ballback in this game. He finally has a teammate. You know... Hold him up a little bit. Keyshawn Jordan was one of those guys that had a drop earlier in this game in the end zone. Finally has a touchdown here, Ron. And that's got to feel good. Keyshawn Jordan had nine receiving touchdowns. 463 yards on 22 catches in 2019. He's got his first major here in 2021 for the Hammer. The snap and the hold is good. The PAT is through. Another flag on this play. But for now, it's 24 to 10. Again, great cook. I'm, I'm waiting to see the uh, call from the referee. Hey, really good drive by the Hamilton Hurricanes. Let's give credit where credit is due. They got the ball. They drove it down the field. The Beefeaters have had the ball here in the fourth quarter for about 35 seconds of play clock. Through some of the fault of their own, though, Ron, yes. especially on that last drive for the Hurricanes, they had potentially turning over the ball Twice. on two different yeah. occasions and a very silly penalty at the very end. Uh, when they try to pretty much just ticky-tack hit Isaiah Smith, who didn't even complete the pass in the end zone, allows them to, well, get a first and goal in the beef feeders red zone for the first time 
all game. But again, we talked to but when I was talking to Coach Gavin Lake quickly at halftime, he had said the undisciplined penalties that this team was taking was not acceptable. He was not happy with it. It is still continuing, not to the same extent that it was earlier in the game, but at that time, it has cost the beat feeders seven points. And the last time these two teams played each other, as I mentioned, 679 days ago, beat feeders won that one in the OFC semifinal in a tight 17 to eight game. Seems like these two teams always play each other tight, Ron. Again, the last time they played here at Citywide, it was Hamilton pulling out the comeback victory in the fourth quarter, 1916, August 24th, 2019. You know, 14 points with nine minutes left. That is an eternity in the Canadian game. This game is far from over. The Beefeaters must answer with a drive here. Does Jared Fernandez Brown get a little tricky here? Not well, yet. no, they're just gonna boot this one wow. down. Down by 14, they're gonna play it smart. Back up the field is Tazzy Vang Bell. Vang Bell stuttering around a couple hurricanes past the 30, slammed down at the 34 yard that line. Ball. And that Clark is where Clark McCallum's gonna line. take over the First offense down. for the London Beef Eaters. John Baia, watch this, he's at number 87, gonna make a block. He got smoked by 44 from uh, the uh, Hamilton uh, Hurricanes. That's Colin Shannon. Uh, you know, great kick, great coverage. Uh, Beef's gotta get something going, guys. Yeah, offensively, they've been stagnant. The last time they even touched the scoreboard was through a Stackhouse field goal in the later half of the second quarter. In fact, you got to think, offensively, they haven't put up any points since the first quarter. It was a punt return block touchdown from Cody McRoberts, which was the last major early in the second queue. Yeah, you know, the B, like I said, the beef feeders, they need to get a drive together right now, take some time off the clock, give their defense, who is exhausted, a breath. Hamilton looking a little disorganized on defense, but they're gonna make me look like a fool. Why? Because they just swallow up Dyer, LJ Dyer out of the backfield. For four. Inside zone play. This is what I like LJ Dyer. He's a tough runner. He's low to the ground. Hey, this is his first game at this level. This kid played high school football for a long time. He was very explosive in high school. He was known as a tough runner. It's a different level. It's great to see him getting some carries, getting some reps. And he's been really good on specials today yeah. too. So. South product, uh, just a great kid. If you ever get to meet a young man, just uh, very polite, really, really nice. Uh, nice up man. by 14 points here are the Hamilton Hurricanes trailing the London Bee Feeders here in this Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener. Is McCallum flush out of the pocket instead of running? He's going to throw this one down the field off the fingertips of the intended target and Connor De Podesta. And I'm just watching the extracurriculars behind the field again, behind the game. No flags on that one. I would have preferred, I would have much rather preferred if Clark runs that, he could have got the first down. And or at least picked up a handful of yards safely. I think he could have safely got the first down, gotten down, and then been uh And if you want to talk about the games within the games, great teammate Sam Acom pretty much took his teammate David Legg by the shoulder and went, let's just walk over here, buddy. Yeah, da David Legg, a uh, product out of St. Thomas, uh, St. Thomas the City, uh, kid I coached years and years ago. Really, really great kid. Good to see him back. We talk about those returning players. David Legg was a huge, huge re-sign for the, uh, for the beef eaters. The news goes from bad to worse for the Hurricanes. We're just finding out that Isaiah Smith appears to be hurt. His services might not be available for the rest of this game. Down by 14, the punt returner lost his step as he was taking about two strides up. That was Jeremy Hicks. By the I don't know if that was good or a bad thing because Hicks had two beef eaters coming down the pipe yeah. anyway, Adam. But, I mean, he gets up to the 47-yard line. Yeah, Jeremy uh, he goes, loses his balance. But, thankfully, like you said, John, two guys tearing down the field. Once again, it's the one area the beefs have been very dominant. But, look, a teams. familiar story. The beef eaters' offense puts up zero on that last drive, allows the door of opportunity to continue to crack open another notch for the visiting Hamilton Hurricanes, who were trailing at one point 21 0. And then they were trailing 24 3. Well, here it's 24 10 with just a couple minutes left in this game. Time of possession has got to be way skewed for Hamilton in the second half. It's got to be close to 20 to 4. So Ethan Bell back again, 116 completed passes on 184 attempts. He has to pick this one off the carpet and try to avoid a sack, but he can. The ball came loose. The officials are going to say it was down anyway. I mean, how many times does he have to blow that whistle until the players get the point? Well, Thompson, number three. 
three sacks. That's, Thompson, yeah, I really five. hope they don't give Bell back a penalty. Be there because the no, this is going to be this is going to be against the, the lineman coming in late for Hamilton uh, for the late hit, and it's going to go back 15 yards regardless. So the only person that made the hit at that play was the quarterback, though, Ron. That's my point. Is uh, unfortunately no, don't watch it. And so there's the quarterback. Yeah, he loses the pigskin right, right here. He doesn't do anything right there. Get hit from behind. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Ron. Silence. I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think he tapped after. Yeah, that's that's the call. That's a ticky tack yeah. call against yeah, the Hurricanes. Like I don't like the call. Well, he is out of bounds. He is out of bounds. He's clearly out of bounds, and then he spun him down and tackled him. Nice sky, anyway. guys. Look at that over there. Football in the Forest City. Back the first game in two years, guys. Or two seasons. Look at that beautiful sky. I love it. I love being here with you guys. This has been so fun. Such a tough break, though, for the Hurricanes faithful yeah. who came down the highway here today. Wow. Taking in Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener action. Unfortunately for them, their team fought hard in the second half, but they got to avoid things like this, Ron, in order to have a chance to win this game. Yeah, you know, you, you took a 10-yard sack, then you take a 15-yard penalty, loss it down, you're second and 35 here. You, you got to run draw screen or get the ball out and a step off quick. Second and a country mile. They're going to go to the run play. Monte. And it's Javante Stanley finding a seam, eventually gets tackled in front of the beef feeders bench. So they get a handful of yards there. Like you mentioned, though, they needed a country mile. They're not going to get that far on it. Well, but you've made it third and semi-manageable. You know, for, as an offensive coach, you've got a, you know, a 10 or 15-yard play. You don't have a 35-yard play in your playbook. At least, you know, I've never had one. I never tried a game plan for that. It still looks like, though, even after a 12-yard gain run, that it would be about a third and 23-yard play coming up here for the Hurricanes. So more than likely, we're going to see Jared Fernandez-Brown come out to boot the ball away. Yeah, and that that's that sack and penalty might have been the final nail, 6-10. Now, again, if the Beefeaters... Beefeaters got to score, they can end no, this they, game. If they, they, they get their offense going just a little bit more... They can solidify the victory here tonight. But unfortunately, that hasn't been the case since that Stackhouse field goal late in the second quarter of play. It's not even a score. You need a drive. You need to take about three or four minutes of clock off of here and, and use up clock. The, the clock is your ally. You have to use them. Bee feeders get well. Let's say a fortuitous bounce. The ball is going to go out right at midfield, and that's where they're going to start this next drive with 550 remaining in the game. And, uh, you know, again, uh, I don't know if I like them coming after the punt like that, but uh, you don't want to get a penalty and give them an automatic first down. And uh, They've been playing with fire, but yeah. to that point, they've had a couple had, blocked yeah. punts as a result. At least. And, uh, you know, but, and the blocked field goal, John, was as well? Well, the Hurricanes had Hurricanes a blocked, blocked field, field goal field to start this game for Stackhouse. And, again, we haven't really seen too much of Stackhouse since the opening half, but we, again, can't confirm whether that's injury or just personnel being mixed up for Gavin Lake's London Bee Feeders. And again, this would be a bit of a historic night for Gavin Lake. It'll be his first ever victory as the head coach of you, the London Beefeaters if they can hang on this next five minutes and 37 seconds. As, as the Beefeaters called timeout, that's their first timeout of the uh, of the second half here. I want to go back to the point that you guys were doing. You didn't really necessarily like bringing the pressure. If that's your philosophy on special teams, that's what you do. You know, you kind of inbred that with them at the start of camp. Hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to bring pressure. We're going to be hard hitting. You live by the sword, you die yeah, by the sword. Yeah, but there's the situational but, football, Ron. Yeah, I, I, I agree, but early in the season, if that's your philosophy, I think you stay with your philosophy. Yeah, maybe in a three-score game. Two-score game, still lots of time, and you just don't want to give teams life. But, I, you know, the, both sides are right. There's no real right answer. It's, it's, it's whatever your philosophy is. Clark McCallum, 55% passing in 2019. Been pretty good here today. In the halftime stat, he was already 6 of 13, 155 yards and 2 TDs. But unfortunately in the second half, not a whole lot of offense to talk about in those sexy Hawaiian jerseys for the coaching staff of the Beef Feeders. <laughs> love those, uh, love those. Three run to the line for Clark McCallum. It's a handoff, though, and not going very far on this gander is L.J. Dyer. Dyer. He almost just looked like he, he just kind of scraped through the line Up with the no middle. explosion. Is Taz open on man. the bubble here, guys? Maybe we'll get that. We can see the... No game. I guess we don't have it, but I don't know, guys. Take a look at it. Maybe they'll come back to it. Uh, Tazzy looked like he was wide open there. Get Tazzy the football. 
Are the beef eaters content with killing clock, knowing that, like Jay just mentioned, 14 points isn't necessarily a whole lot in CGFL style football. Lots of game clock left for the Hurricanes. Yeah, lots of game clock. You need to convert into a first down here. That is what you must do on this drive. You've got to get a conver conversion before you think of a score. Hamilton's bench getting loud and into it. They know this is a pivotal moment. Clark McCallum over the top. Are they going to say that he reeled it in? Absolutely he did. Absolutely he did. And he's indicating first down for Connor DePodesta. We'll see if the officials agree with him, though. Uh, you know what? I've, I've got the perfect angle from where he was. He got his Game hands ball. underneath the ball here. He absolutely the got that ball. And it does move the chain to your point, Ron. You said they needed the first down, and they got it. Yeah, that was huge because now you've given your defense a chance, okay? You've given them a breath. You can take another minute off of play clock here. Another first down will take another minute off. That's what you've got to be looking at here at your beef eaters. You're not necessarily looking for a score. You're looking to kill the clock. And have we seen a whole lot of Hurricanes offense here today? Sadly, no, but I still believe that Ethan Belbeck could bring this team back, but you can't do it if you don't give him enough clock to do so. As to that point, Ron, going back to LJ Dyer on the ground, maybe not the result they want yard-wise, but it will be time-wise. Yeah, and again, it, it's you, you gain of about a yard there. You got a second and eight, second and nine here. Get just looking for an easy throw, an easy completion. Get to the, get to the wide receiver, the Y slot, into the open space, into the zone, sit him down, make an easy completion, 10 yards. That's how you're going to close this game out. You don't have to go over the top. You got to get a first down. The last major in this game was Ethan Belbeck hooking up with Keyshawn Jordan in the back of the south end zone here at Citywide. It is the Beef Eaters looking for their first points of this second half. McCallum firing it down the field, almost intercepted, coming over the top was Jake Attard. Remember, Attard already has an interception in this game and potentially could have had three in this contest so far. What a play. What a yeah, play. this is a great play by the defensive back. Jay, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just love the, you know, basically that two guys in coverage. I get what Clark's trying to do here, but uh, he was open, guys. Just an unbelievable play. Uh, by the defensive back. London Beef Eaters will be on the road after this game. They'll head down to Loyalist College to take on the Quinty Skyhawks on September 5th. And then they'll also be on the road after that. Instead of going east, they'll go west to St. Clair Fratman on September 11th, where Hamilton will be at home, quote unquote, and Brantford, Ontario, take on the GTA Grizzlies and those Quinty Skyhawks. Wow. Getting this Centino. one away. Oh, I thought he might have sold the call a little nope. bit there. Leo Centino falls down after the punt. They'll get out of the end zone, do the Hurricanes, led through Javante Stanley, but I think the Drop beef eaters are going to get this ball back. Absolutely, but I think this is the five-yard kind. I think this is the running into the kicker, not no. roughing the kicker. Yes, it's no more. Yeah, it's no more if it's 10 or 15. Okay, it's well, changing now, right, Ron? Yeah. So, but I remember back in the day, you're right, there was the two different calls. Uh, but he absolutely made contact. He could have stopped. He, his momentum brought him in, the, the kick was gone, and, and, and a great sell job. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> but you're right, but Ron, you're right. I'm not saying it's just, you know, Santino doing what he does. I mean, I guess soccer players know how to do that, right? They kind of sell it, embellish it. <laughs> we have hit the three-minute warning here at Citywide Sports Park. Thanks for joining us here on your Saturday evening. It's a muggy one here in August, but an enjoyable one nevertheless in the Forest City as the Hamilton Hurricanes made the trip down to the Forest City to take on the London Beef Eaters here on Beefs TV. So thank you for joining us in this Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And again, they'll give you a lot more football action. Believe me, over 60,000 views of football contests on that channel alone. And as well as I mentioned, future OFC and CGFL games to come. Clark McCallum back onto the field after the bit of a silly penalty, if you ask me, running into the punter, giving the Beef Eaters another chance on this drive. McCallum dumps it over to the right side. Taz Van Bell Fumble. has it, but then the ball came loose, and it looks like a blue uniform's on it. Hurricane's ball. Hurricane's ball. This Number is what Gavin Lake talked about, guys. He talked about these little mistakes that are going to happen because you haven't been playing, and, you know, something simple as that, you got to, like you said, protect the football, Ron. You've been talking about it all afternoon. Two minutes and 40 seconds. Is it a lot of time? Not so much when you're down by 14 points. But again, with a stud like Bellbeck, who threw 1,600-plus yards and 16 touchdowns in the 2019 season, Ron, it ain't over. 
till it's this over. No, again, you know, it, Hamilton Three. has done a great job of not letting this game get out of control for them, which it easily could have done. At 21 they nothing, they could have rolled over and died, yeah. especially on the road in a season opener. They there, did not do that. There you go. They they rode out the emotion of the Beef Eaters playing at home, their first game of the, in, in, let's be realistic, almost two years. They rode that emotion through. They took their licks with it, and they've kind of, in my opinion, since midway through the second quarter of this game, they've been the better team. Hurricanes, uh, it's do or die football right now, KJ. Drop a game plan. Yeah, I, I think you just got to, you know, run the football and uh, try to set up uh, your play action game. Once I've been saying it all day. They try again, to do exactly that, but to your point, Tyler Thompson in on the tackle from the lineback position. Yeah, and I, I would say I agree with you, Ron, but I'll say one thing. Both defenses have been Dustin phenomenal all yeah. day. And one of the things the Beefs have done is they have stopped this explosive offense uh, for the Hurricanes. And so uh, Beef, just a great defensive battle. Beef Eaters are ranked 8th in the nation. The Hurricanes are ranked 10th in the That's nation. The Do you think that's going to change after this week, Ron? The Beef Eaters could go up. I think Hamilton's shown enough that they could potentially stay there, maybe drop down one spot to 11. You know, don't don't. it, it depends on the other teams in the, in the league. How, how does St. Clair look tomorrow? How does GTA look? Yeah, again, St. Clair will be on the road tomorrow taking on the GTA Grizzlies. That's a 1 p.m. kickoff tomorrow in week one still of OFC action as the quarterback's going to hang on to the ball himself, put his body on the line, diving over the first oh, down boundary, Rock moving down the line chains line. for the visitors. Four. Good tough run. Again, stops the clock now until the ball's reset. So you don't mind the quarterback run on that. Smart decision. Don't put the ball in harm's way. Get the first down, reset, do it again. And we saw Ethan Belbeck, unfortunately, getting his best crash test dummy impersonation in the opening half of this game. And you're thinking, man, I don't know if he's going to last. Well, now, with less than two minutes left in this game, it's safe to say he's going to empty the tank and try and get his team back in this game. Absolutely. Great competitor. So Belbeck sets two in motion. Three, check that. Two to the near side. Throws it over to the near side. This one's caught. Trying to stay in bounds, but falling down in the process was Lord well, Anto. Yeah, and again, just a little quick little out pattern or a little sit down route here to the wide receiver. If they're playing 10 yards off, run like Coach Matt Snyder would say this, run the money route. You Click know, clock, tick tock on my wristwatch. So, Ron, they're running out of time. 1.40 as the time continues to evaporate off the citywide sports park clock. Guys, as we're getting near the end, who's the player of the game? Who's the specialist of the game? Some uh, inter A lot of players that I think could get it tonight. I think the guy that set the tone early, though, was Jordan Wright with that interception on the very first play and then the block punt that ended up setting up the Danny Bryan touchdown to make it 14 nothing early for the Beef Eaters. When you consider they're Stephen still Williams with that 14-point lead right now, KJ, it was solidified early, and, and there hasn't been a lot of offense to talk about as far as the home one. team's concerned in the second half. Yeah, I think that name Jordan has uh, been the night. Also, Jordan Fletcher with a... Yeah, Jordan Wright, night. Jordan Fletcher, a battle of the Jordans. It's been crazy, man. It's just, and then on, on Hamilton's side, there's tons of guys that have contributed and played good football, including this quarterback who's been pressured all day and has stayed in and taken that pressure and has an opportunity to, you know... Pull off a miracle, maybe. 70 seconds left in the game. It's a third down play, though. They're going to need four yards here to continue their travels on your Saturday evening. The snap. Belwick pump faking, trying to go deep. Has a man. The ball's wow. up in the air. Incomplete. Play. Great defense oh, from Jacob Mandel. Jacob Mandel. Oh, man, for the beef feeders really decided to be the it factor there. I thought he was going to come down with the ball, the Hamilton receiver. This is a great defensive play. Yeah, and again, it's it, that's what we've seen all day. The defensive back, it's been like a unit here. They've just been making plays, and it's a different name every single time. Just a battle between him and Luca Jones, and to your point, Ron, I thought Luca Jones had come down with the ball, but almost that continuing the battle mentality right to the whistle allowed it to be jarred loose at the last second. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? 55 seconds left, one first down, game is over. Well, give credit where credit is due for Hamilton. 679 days since the last taste of OFC action. In that game, though, they lost 17-8 to to the Beef Eaters as the Beef Eaters would go on to the OFC Championship to win it all. Well... Here on your Saturday evening in the Forest City, it looks like a 24 to 10 final is on the horizon for the home team here in the 2021 season opener in the Ontario Football Conference. 
This is a elongated run to the right side through Taz Vang That's Bell. 48 seconds left on the clock. I like the call, and here's why. Not necessarily to get out Six of bounds, seven, but get the ball back in Tazzy's hand because he just had that fumble. Let's regain some of that confidence. You're going to need him down that stretch run. But Jay, I mentioned this time and time again, 1999, a couple days ago to say the least, that's when the Windsor AKO Fratman, who are now known as the St. Clair Fratman, won 32-24 over the Okanagan Sun. That's the last time an Ontario Football Conference team won the CJFL Championship. Why do I mention that? Well, the OFC will host the CJFL Championship this year, slated for December 4th. Yeah, and it's been a long time, and we'll see. I mean, a lot of things have to happen, but uh, they will have the semifinal and final here in Ontario. Two run of the line to the left side, fired over to that left side, reeled in by Devin Smith. Down Not fast, really any gain, though, on the play to bring up third down, Ron. Yeah, but it's forced you know, to call their second and final time out here. Of a, so now, you know, you, you're going to turn five. around and punt the ball, which, which, again, you don't mind. Is it safe to say the number one thing you want to improve upon before seeing the Quinty Skyhawks at Loyalist College oh. Sunday, September 5th is penalties, KJ? Absolutely. I guess. Yeah, man, I, that orange flag's been flying around. It kind of reminds me of flag a couple of, we had a special guest referee and uh, some flags. I remember one time he was hiding behind that goalpost. Some interesting, uh, Coach Merrill's could tell us about it. Uh, the finest it. refereeing in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some, some fine coaching in that too, by the way. <laughs> uh, for the record, he was hiding behind the goalpost in my game. Yeah, Colin Powell to throw it for yes. It was awesome. Well, there's not much action in that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Third down in this one as we are heading off to the setting sun on your Saturday night. Again, thanks for joining us all across the world here on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the like button and hit subscribe for future OFC and CJFL games. Again, your beef eaters after today will go off to face the Quinty Skyhawks on the road on September 5th. The Hamilton Hurricanes will host the GTA Grizzlies in Brantford that same day. And those two teams, again, will have a taste of home action if you're the Hurricanes and a taste of road action if you're the beef eaters after today. 35 seconds left and it looks like cooler heads are finally prevailing between the plays, Ron. It only took almost 60 minutes of football to do it. Yeah, you know, and again, that's kind of, there, there's been a couple of stories of the game. I think the biggest story of the game for me, guys, is football's back. Yeah. After such a long, drawn-out process for these teams to go through the protocols that they've done, jump through all the hoops that they have, it is great to have the Canadian game back. And if you're a Hurricanes fan, you hope that Isaiah Smith is going to be healed up for your next battle again when they're going to take on those GTA Grizzlies. And if you are the Beef Eaters, let's face it, you said Danny Bryan was okay, but we didn't see him at all in the second half. So again, they're going to hope he's okay when they go on the road to take on the Quincy Skyhawks. Like you mentioned, a new program in this league. New program. So again, you know, throw the game films out, so to speak. You know, like the, it is what it is. Because you've got no film on these guys whatsoever. I think, you know, if my recollection uh, recalls from the uh, Kingston area, there'll be a spread, kind of throw it all over the field type of team as well. So the offense goes back onto the field for the Hurricanes. Here they complete a pass to the near sidelines, close to the first down marker. It'll be Teddy Iskerskou well, with the reception. Diego. That was Jonathan Bayon, I believe, on the tackle, guys, number 27. Sorry, check that. No, it actually got uh, Gaddy Kazadi. Gaddy 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 Gaddy. So... All the Kazadis are, are uh, two. on the score sheet tonight. Tackles. Picks up eight yards on the reception, brings up a second down play. And again, it's hard to believe that football is back. It took a while, Ron, but we're happy to be here. Absolutely, and again, couldn't be happier Saturday night. Hey, beautiful evening, great way for us to uh, close out the uh, day. The lone points of the second half came through a Keyshawn Jordan touchdown pass from Ethan Belbeck as this one will be incomplete to the near sidelines to bring up third down with 25 seconds left. But it's hard to believe. It was 14-0 after the first quarter of play thanks to an 82-yard touchdown pass to Spencer Foster and then about a 7-yard pass to Danny Bryan. A punt return blocked TD by Cody McRoberts. And that was, uh, I believe, Kakati with the actual block on the play. Or Kazadi, I should say, with the block for the beef eaters that led to the Cody McRoberts punt return touchdown. Then, eventually, Jared Fernandez-Brown got the Hurricanes on the board with a 27-yard field goal. That was returned by Stackhouse, though, to make it 24-3. That's where we were at halftime. No points in the third quarter. And eventually, I mentioned that Jordan touchdown in the fourth. 
Belbeck runs out of real estate. Or no, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, it is a new quarterback. James Duke. The Duke is at the helm. Yeah, and again, it's good to see like kind of mass substitutions on both sides of the field. Make sure you don't know when you're going to have these guys coming in. It's great to have real game reps. Practicing is one thing. Game speed, game reps, totally different. So this night has to feel a lot better than the 51-1 to thrashing that was left in their tongues as they left TD Stadium on a chilly November evening, Ron, here in 2021. It took a long time in August. Well, the weather's hot and the beef feeders stay hot. It looks like they're going to prevail with a 14-point victory. Yeah, I think you're going to see the sexies playing football, which is the unstoppable play, taking the knee. Appreciate all those who tuned in on YouTube this evening for this Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener. It does look like Ron Forward's favorite play formation is at midfield. It looks like victory formation for the Beef Eaters with 17 seconds to go. So about one more knee, I would imagine, will solidify this game on your Saturday evening. I want to give a big shout out to our cameraman, Alex Schleihoff, up on the rafters doing all the action, as well as our technical, executive, and directing producer, Adam Melrose, on graphic design. His son, Wonderbread, DJ Melrose. And of course, Ron Forwarda, KJ Academy, and yours truly, I'm John Urban. It is a 24 to 10 victory here on your Saturday evening for the London Beef Eaters over the Hamilton Hurricanes. The Beef Eaters go to 1 and 0, the Hurricanes 0 and 1. This has been the Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener. And what a way to start off the year for the London Beef Eaters, Ron. Fantastic way, special, like we kind of talked about at the start of the game defenses we're going to kind of like dominate the game special teams it kind of has been that way uh jay was you were saying earlier kind of player of the game for me it was the jordan fletcher coming out party the defensive lineman was absolutely unblockable completely dominated and took over the game midway through the first quarter and dominated all the way through to the end and the one guy we didn't mention ron uh, and john was kevin griffith's defensive coordinator and that defensive staff for gavin lake because gavin's focused on that offense, trying to get it uh, up to par. And I think, I think, good congratulations to Gavin Lake. Seemed like a tale of two halves, though, guys. I, mean, I think it was 24-3 to for the London Beef Eaters at halftime, Ron. The lone touchdown in the second half of football was a Keyshawn Jordan catch for the Hurricanes. But unfortunately, a little too little, too late. They fall 24-10 to here on your Saturday evening. Yeah, and again, like we talked about earlier during the broadcast, it was four drop touchdowns for Hamilton. This game, even though it was a 14-point spread, it sure felt a lot closer. Missed opportunities for Hamilton, took advantage of a few opportunities for the Beefs. Final thoughts, KJ. One for the Hamilton Hurricanes. They'll have back-to-back -back home games to try and respond from this opening loss of the season. And for the London Beef Eaters, now you're on the right foot, 1-0, and but you're going to go on the road for two straight games. A long eastern trip to Quinty and a long west trip to St. Clair. I think Hamilton's a good football team. I think this is very good for them. I know it's a six-game season, but their first game allows them uh, to, 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 to kind of see what they've got, and I expect them to rebound, and I think We'll see them at 2-1. I'll tell you something, the interesting playoff game when we flip it around in November if they do end up coming back here. 679 days ago it was the Beef Eaters prevailing 17-8 over these Hurricanes in the OFC semifinal. Here on your Saturday evening from the Ford City, it's a 24-10 victory for the London Beef Eaters here in the Ontario Football Conference 2021 season opener. For the rest of the crew, I'm Johnny Yu. We bid you adieu from Citywide Sports Park.